Hello, everyone. Hey, Danielita. How are you? How are you? Um, yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not good. No. I'm not good. It's one of those days that I don't, I can't say I'm good. Yeah. I can't. It doesn't make sense to say I'm good. Yeah, I'm sorry for saying I'm good. No, I mean, I no, no, like no, no. I was struggling with my words. No, and... no, no, no. Because it's, um, I think, uh, I think it's, it's, you know, it's what we do. We try to say, sure, I'm good. Yeah, sure. Like, the world doesn't make sense, but we kind of have to be good in order to keep, you know, living, in order to keep doing what we're supposed to do. And um, for me, it's really weird, you know, because I, I don't know how, I don't know how I see myself after these years. Um, you know, sometimes people ask me to describe what we do and you know you you fall into saying like yeah you're you know i'm i'm a painter but i you know we're content creators like i do these paintings that we put together in a video and yeah at the end know, it's content, content creators so. right so it's really weird for me to see people that i mean that's their living and i get it um i'm not here to judge any you know person but um but yeah, but you know, they, they keep doing their content or, or maybe they had content, you know, planned because that's usually how they work or, or people, you know, it's a little bit different with people that do live videos or, or they do Twitch videos. But um, but maybe they had stuff planned and maybe they go like, oh yeah, this is, this is a dark day, but let's put the reaction video of this movie, you know, mm -hmm. or this like TV show. Um. Like I'm, I'm, I was always a fan of like late night um, TV shows when I was um, in the U.S. I, I enjoyed them, and um, it's so awkward to see them do like this, um, you know, this initial monologue where they say, "This was a dark day for the, you know, certainly for the U.S. Dark day for the world," I would say. Um, and you know they they speak from the heart, and then they have actors as you know guests, and they have to speak about movies, and then the audience laughs, and you know they do an entertaining show because because that's what they do. But and I'm sure you know that's their job, and and there's like this huge disconnect between like for them this, this disconnect between what they feel and what they have to do. Mm -hmm. mm. But I, th I don't think that's our case. Like, we don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's our job, but we don't have to do anything. So when I was thinking, like, how do, you, how do you paint? And, you know, for the people that are maybe thinking, oh, what happened in the U.S.? Oh, yeah, that, you know, mass shooting. That's horrendous. I don't know. I don't know why these, um, these things hit really hard for me. Um, I've always told Danny ever since the day we met that that um that uh i i don't do good with kids you know suffering mm. i just don't i think nobody does nobody no but it's it's true that kids shouldn't suffer yeah but period yeah but for me if you want to destroy me like destroy me from my core just tell me about this unnecessary suffering of a kid and i say it unnecessary because life will make you suffer and you know maybe uh, um kids fall in love and uh and they you know the other person breaks their heart and they suffer and they really feel it or they you know maybe a friend um don't they don't want to be friends anymore and they, they they really feel it because kids feel as much as we do and you know that's life that's that's the suffering that accompanies life and and that's having a heart and and having emotions so yeah, that sort of growing up, that those sort of feelings that sometimes are not great, that's part of growing up. And I get it. Kids have to go through this, even though for, for example, for me as a parent, it, you don't, you never want to see your kid like, you know, be nothing but just happy, like a ray of sunshine. That's what kids are meant to be. So when stuff like this happens, I mean, I remember, because I remember 10 years ago when, um, when Sandy Hook happened, um, Fer was about to be born and Samu was, you know, the age where, you know, when these absolutely beautiful kids um, died. And uh, 
And I was thinking, I remember thinking like, what is this world that my kids are inheriting? What, like, what is going on? What is going on? Like, because I, even though it's far away, even though we were here and it happened in Connecticut, um, I could just, in my kid, I could see every kid that died that day. In Samu, I could see every single kid. And, um, and with Fed, 10 years later, she happens to be the same age, mm. you know, as this horrendous tragedy. And I had, Fed had like a, a play, play this morning. And I was just seeing a bunch of kids in that play. And I just broke. Ugh. It's, it's horrendous. Horrendous. Plus, my brother, you know, whom I love dearly, um, lives in Texas. My nephew is the same age as, as, as Fed. So it's, it's, it's a lot of things that you go like, oh, come on, come on. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. And, um, and I was thinking, okay, th this is, you know, U.S. has always been part of me. You know, it's, it was the, the place that gave me my education. I have great friends place Over you there. were born yeah the place i was born even though like you know i could never call myself like a uh, somebody from the mi midwest but that's where i was born and my parents lived there and if you ask my mother the happiest moments of her life was were there um my brother is american my brother is far more american than he is colombian by now so um so th I, I do have like this deep connection i always felt that my you know, my old in my old years, I would probably move back to the states and and live there and kind of retire um, peacefully. I thought um, so. I I've always had this this um, connection. You know, I feel I feel like I'm I'm bound to be there eventually, and um, and these sort of things just destroy me. And so even though I'm not there, even though I don't, even though I I can't vote, but even though I'm not there. Even though I don't, you know, I'm not always thinking about, you know, okay, this is my state because I don't really have a state. Um, these are my elected officials. This is what I would want from them. Uh, this is these are the things that I would um, I would vote for. Um, this this idea of just common sense always invades me when I see these things, and it's like, okay, like let's not make this uh, um, discussion about guns because. You know, that's going to take us nowhere, nowhere. That's like having a discussion about abortion. It just doesn't, you know, nothing changes, nothing, nothing. Um, but, you know, if, if we take that out, if we take that out of the question, we could say, okay, what have we done as humanity to prevent things like these happening? And you could say, well, there's these laws. And you could argue that they don't work. They don't work. Nothing works. So it's not even about guns. It's not even about, let's not even have a discussion about that. Just so we don't get into these abstract, absurd discussions that go nowhere. But you could say, what has been done? Well, we have done, we have done these things. And then you could say, well, none of them worked. Nothing worked. Nothing, nothing has worked. Everything, it, like it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And with, and with every one of these horrendous acts that, that happens, that takes place, people are emboldened by them. You know, people that are sick, they get emboldened by all these things. So why not just say, hey, if it hasn't worked, if nothing that you've done has worked, try something else, like try Try something else, like anything else, but try it. Try it because everything you've done up until now doesn't work. It doesn't work. And, you know, the people that are paying for this are not really even people. They're kids. They're babies. Mm. It's, it's, that's not right. That's not right. That's, there's so many things that are not right about... Um, about yesterday that oh it's um it's impossible like i was thinking today i don't want to paint i don't who wants to paint 
who wants to fucking pay? Like, who, what does this mean? Like, who cares? And then I said, you know what? I've gone through these dark moments because I think we've all had, you know, in, in different degrees. And, um, and I always tell myself, if I say no today, I don't know if I'll ever paint. I don't know if I'll ever paint again. I, I don't. I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if it's worth paint. I don't know if life is worth painting anymore. Like, if you wake up and if you hear about, I don't know, Somalia and Yemen and Afghanistan and the Gaza Strip and um, Ukraine. And the things here too. And then, yeah, and then we see the local news and it's, again, horrible. And then, you know, I try to see, okay, it's horrible here. What does it look like in my brother's neighborhood? What is what is my, like what is my brother's life look like? What is what is this place that I would want to be in in the future look like? And it's even worse. So everything is horrible. Everything is worse, worse, worse. Or you realize that just humanity is horrendous. Like the world is plagued by us human beings. And if you if you if that's all you take in you don't you don't move from your bed you don't you don't care about voting you don't care about waking up you don't care about education you don't care about anything cuz all you see is it doesn't matter everything that you can do it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it has no effect and when i find myself in that mindset i always feel i don't know if i can get out of it i don't know if i can get out like if I start to kind of burrow deep enough into that mindset, I don't know if I can get out. I really don't. I think that's a super, super dark place that consumes you where you lose faith in everything, everything. You lose faith in everyone else's humanity and your own humanity, your own capacity to, to, um, to inspire change, to change yourself, to, the betterment of yourself. And I, I, I don't know. And every time, every time I find myself there and I tell myself, well, you should paint, paint through it because that's all you know. That's all you know. And I go like, paint through it. What, what is that curing? What is that doing? What, what, what does that mean, paint through it? What does that mean, work? Because I know that I could say, I could convince myself, no, just ease into it. No, I, it, at least for me, it just doesn't. I can't do it. It doesn't work that way. I, I would be, I would just be the person that drops everything, drops everything. And it doesn't, you know, it makes no sense, no sense. What I find that helps me, aside from having like an opportunity while I'm, I don't know, I'm about to do a, a probably a terrible painting, but who cares? Um, it's just like, you know, this is the space where you just think, you just paint, you paint, you know, and with the hopes not of getting through it, because I don't know if what happened yesterday is something that you can get through it, that, that yesterday scarred families for decades. It pretty much messed up the lives of every single kid that was alive that had to go through that. Mm -hmm. it, it messed everything up. It messed, it was, it's not just about what happened. It's all the ripples, the horrible ripples that stretch, you know, it can stretch past oceans. Like it got me, it got me in the, you know, in my soul, it broke me, it broke me. So I don't know. So when I find myself there, I say, okay, this is not gonna cure anything. It's not, let's not be, let's not think painting is a cure. It doesn't cure anything, nothing, nothing, you know, in itself. It's you, you just paint and then there's a painting and that's about it. That's it. That's all that happens. But I do feel that at least it gives me a chance to just, you know, listen to myself. And today I'm going to paint a damn mosquito because I have painted like a mosquito. I painted like a spider. And I don't know. Maybe they have it right. You know, maybe they ha they understand how to live in harmony, you know, in this world. And we don't get it. We've never gotten it. We just don't, we just don't get it. We, we don't get it. So, um, you know, as bright as we think we are, as intelligent we think we are, you know, we, we, we're always you know, kind of flaunting that we are the uh, most intelligent of species in this planet. We're not, we're not, we're idiots. 
we're soulless, you know, we're mean, evil. Um, we're not. So, you know, this insignificant, you know, um, creature has probably inhabited this planet far more than we have. They know how to live in harmony. They know. They know. And we just, you know, swat it, kill it, because it's annoying. It buzzes. But, um, you know, they, they understand that they understand what it means to be here a little bit better than we do, I feel. A little bit better. So maybe that gives me perspective, you know, just knowing how, God, how fragile we are, how we haven't gotten any better. You know, sometimes we, we look back and we think of like, you know, the civilizations that went to like horrible wars. And it's like, oh my God, no, that was, those were dark times. Oh, these are dark times. These are, we, we haven't moved an inch. That is the curse of our species, I feel. And I'm not saying this is a, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, why do anything then? Like, oh, what a downer of a video. No, come on. It's, it, it, content, it's not supposed to be pretty. It's not supposed to be anything, but just this is, this is our space. This is how we feel today. And this is how absurd it is to try and say, oh yeah, let's, Let's paint. Let's do. Let's paint as if nothing had happened. Or maybe painting is going to help me feel a little bit better. And if it does, you know, if that's the healing that you need, great. I don't know. I don't think I, you know what? I hope I never heal from any of these, you know, sort of news. I hope they etch like this, you know, scar in my soul forever that I never forget. Never, ever forget. Because why would you want forget these moments why would you ever want to forget what happened so i don't know so i'm i'm i'll be painting i'll be trying to you know just understand myself um my role as a painter as i'm painting i i i paint today because i don't think tomorrow is going to be better or a week from now is going to be better or a year from now is going to be better you know, was it be is it better now? Ten, you know, ten years ago that um, that horrible massacre happened in Connecticut. Is it better? Like, oh, did we move on? So it never gets better. So if there's uh, no reason to paint today, there shouldn't be a reason to paint in ten years. That's the truth. Because I don't. If, and if you think, yes, yeah, no, we can we can get through this. Think about the parents. Think about the kids that saw what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. Think and tell them that in ten years it's going to be better. Think about the teachers too. Yeah, that saw their yeah. kids suffering. Oh God! So it won't get better. That's the truth. It just doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't go away. And it should never go away. It's a feeling that you should never hope that how bad you feel goes away. Because then you try to do something, something. You know, you try to do the smallest thing that you can so that just the world, you know, maybe moves an inch farther from what it was yesterday, from the world that we saw yesterday. I don't know. It hits me horrible. It's horrible for me. Horrible, horrendous. You know, I, I always tell Danny that... Um, and I thought I thought about this like uh, a lot yesterday, and I still think about this today. But you know, the one thing I'm scared of, one thing, you know, and it's probably the the only thing I'm scared of in this world, is something happening to my kids. Like everything else, I can deal with everything else. Like if you tell me, "Oh, you lost everything. You have no money," I don't care. I don't care. Like I'll find a way. If you tell me, "Oh, you have the sickness," like I'll fight through it. And if I die from sickness I'm, I'm fine you know I'll, I'll be fine I, I can be okay with those things I, I I know and I know the sort of life that I've lived and sometimes I feel come on like you know throw this my way like I've lived don't never throw it a, like a kid's you know in the path of a kid's life so it breaks me I, I don't know anyways so we're going <laughs> to try to paint a damn mosquito today. 
and we'll see how we do. Um, but I, I just don't know how to um, engage in the conversations. Yeah. Because I don't want to be like, obliviate, like kind of obliviate what happened. Like oblivious with, to what happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, like obliviate what happened with our conversation. I don't know if that's oh, the way you're saying it. No, maybe that's, um, I don't know what you're trying to say with that. Like, let me, tell like, me. Like, forget? Okay. Or to, yeah, to make something, like, disappear. To, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Because I, I don't want to be, like, I don't know. Like, I'm being completely honest. I don't know how to no. have a conversation here. I don't know how to engage to the conversation. I don't know what uh, I should be saying. Yeah, we, So you know. It's it's okay, I feel. I feel every I feel all of it is okay today. I I think it, it it's it's okay. I really do. I really don't think it's uh it's a day where we think, "Oh, how are we interacting or you, you know, how many views is this going to have or how you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't like it really doesn't matter. It doesn't. Maybe what ha what maybe what's okay is just, you know, we're here. And we're going to keep each other company for, you know, we keep each other company in days that are nice. And uh, we'll keep each other company in the days that are horrendous. Because I don't know if it gets darker than this. I really don't. I really, really don't. So I can't see, like I rationally can't see how somebody could tell me that there is, oh no, you thought that was dark? There is a darker world. No, there's not. There's not. There's absolutely not. Because when people said 10 years ago that, that, you know, we as humanity, because we are one, that we as humanity had made a choice and Sandy Hook didn't matter and it didn't matter. We chose to say that this didn't matter, that this didn't change anything. Like the, the proof of that is today. The proof of that is what we went through yesterday. It's right there. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter. You know, the life of four and five year olds didn't matter. So it's a it's a reminder of how, you know, how dark it really is. If you think there's something worse than this, I can't think of it. I really can't. This is us. This is us at our darkest. It really is. It really, really is. And if it is us at our darkest, it's going to be difficult to just try to make sense of it so best we could do i don't know could keep each other company you know that's that's all we can do and that's about it and with me i'm gonna find some sort of solace but not really but i'm gonna try in um in painting a mosquito because it gives me a sense of you know my value i think of my real value in this planet. So, I don't know. Mm, I was just uh, double checking what I said and I think I got it right. No, I'm so sorry. Obliviate is to forget or to wipe oh, from existence. Oh, so. no, dude, I, I, no, I no, apologize. No, I, was, I, don't, I, was doubting. I don't know that word, to be honest. I know oblivious is to turn like a, a blind eye to something. To be To be oblivious is to like, you know, that you don't notice, that you, you choose to not notice something. But um, I, didn't, I didn't know that word, so forgive me. Cody, when Nikki said two of my three kids are right in that age range, and when I look at them, they are so small and innocent that, I, that it just boggles me, boggles the mind that someone would hurt them. Yeah, and, and you know, this person, this person is probably law, like... He was long gone as a human being, you know, before he, he did this. Like, I'm sure, you know, that there's, there's people in this world that need help. There's people in this world that are beyond any sort of help that we can give them. Um, so there's not, there's no rational way to understand what happened yesterday. We could just say, no, you know, this is a young psychopath for sure. Of course, you know, of course it is. But beyond that, it's, we have, there's, there's no way of understanding what happened or why it happened. There's no way. There's, 
there's no reason that anyone could ever give to you to help you, you know, understand why yesterday happened. Nothing, nothing. There's absolutely nothing. And I'm sure that it's, uh, for the people that have to investigate, it's going to be horrendous trying to, trying to make sense of, you know, of something like this. But the truth is, it's, it's senseless. It's just that simple. It's absolutely senseless. It's, it's one of those things that doesn't, you know, the world sometimes is the cruelest and the most unfair place in this universe. Like our planet, our species, it's like, you know, the most, the most unfair place in this universe, I feel. So, I don't know. Mm. Cody Winicky said, I think community is even more important on a day like this. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes when we're by ourselves, like, and um, I've been looking at my Instagram quite a bit. Um, there's people that are, you know, they're suffering. They don't know how to deal with this. And if this is us, just as humanity, you know, like, I can't imagine, like, again, my brain, my soul doesn't have a place to imagine how fa how the families that are affected mm -hmm. are, are, are going through this. Like, I, I don't think I could bear that weight. I, I can't. Even thinking about it, it breaks me. I, I, I'm broken, completely broken. So, but it's, it's also like painful to see so many people just saying, I don't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. Like, this is too much. This is way too much. So it's, um, it's, um, it's okay to have like a place to say, hey, it's a lot for me too. You know, it is. It's a lot. And, and that's all we need to say. Like, we don't have to have like discussion here on gun violence. We don't have, that's going to take us absolute. Honestly, that's going to take us nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. We, we know what happened yesterday. We know it deep down in our hearts. We know what happened yesterday. All of us knows what happened yesterday. And I think we all know deep down inside also why stuff like this, you know, happens in the U.S., mostly or in percentages that are like so exponentially higher than any other place on earth and the u.s it's it doesn't mean that the u.s harbors mental illness like there's no like, mental illness is everywhere in this world it's everywhere so there are only very few variables that make the u.s quite different like significant almost like um, inherently different from other places on earth. And we have to examine those. We have to. We really do. Because if we don't, if we don't, if we're not even willing to, then we're saying, you know what? None of this matters. None of this matters. But if that's the message that we send our kids, young people, you know, that none of this matters, like, we are breaking them too. We are telling we we are telling them the world that you're going to inherit. Don't worry about it. It's already apocalypse. It's it's broken. You know you don't have to do. You don't have to. Why find a job? Why work? Why study? Why? It's burning already. You know it's it's as dark as it can get. So I don't know. I don't know. There's probably not going to be any answers for anything today because I don't think it's a place to find answers. I don't think we should discuss. We should use this place to discuss either. I'm sure some of us, I'm sure maybe most of us, because usually artists are of a more liberal mindset. Usually, you know, art makes your soul open up a little bit. So usually we have the same values. We share the same values. We don't have to though, but, but we usually do. 
but I'm sure there's people that see things differently and I don't know. I don't think to get, you know, to get pissed off and have kind of like irrational discussions here, it's not going to take us anywhere. It's not going to fix anything, not going to take us anywhere. So, so maybe you could just use this, um, use this space for, uh, for company. And, um, I don't know. I felt weird this morning because my daughter had this recital, this play. And um, and there were moments in the play that I was laughing because they had some horrible jokes. And um, and uh, and I felt weird laughing. I was like, I shouldn't I don't I don't want to f- laugh right now. I don't want to. I don't want to smile. I don't want to laugh. Um, it just felt wrong. And um but then I realized, no, this is this is why it this is why it hurt so much yesterday. Just looking at those kids, just you know, having this broken play, everyone forgetting their lines. It was in Italian, but it was in very a very soft spoken Italian because yeah, like you a know, whisper. Yeah, eighty percent of them are super shy, and they don't. You can't. You can barely hear them. So for me to understand Italian, it has to be slow, and it has to be super basic. So I got about 30% of what the play was about. <laughs> and uh, they also sometimes spoke in Latin, some of these kids. And you could tell them like their brain was frying, trying to, un- trying to remember their lines in Latin. And I was like, this is so, <laughs> it's so dumb and it's so beautiful and it's so perfect. Um, and that's what kids are supposed to be. You know, that's what it... And I let myself smile, even though it felt weird, and even though it felt like, oh, you know, you you have reasons enough, ample reasons enough to never smile, to never to say, you know what, the world is horrible. We we are making this world a worse place. We're going to leave this world because we are, you know, our species are is going to be here like a finite amount of time but we are going to leave this world a worse place than than we inherited it's it's amazing and we fucking inherited a planet that had an asteroid hit it that's what we inherited that killed dinosaurs which would be here probably if a if an asteroid hadn't hit that's the world we inherited it it almost broke the planet you know it 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 tore through the biggest life forms that were in this planet and that's what we inherited and guess what we're leaving it worse we're going to leave it worse for like bacteria and amoeba and insects like yeah it's your problem now or they're probably going to say Woof, good riddance that was that that was a long 500,000 years but good riddance Mm, Lola Onigiri dice empatía es la respuesta nosotros como humanidad cada vez carecemos más de ella mm, cierto mm, Marcelo Peralta said I feel you Nicolás my wife is a school teacher and she always imagines her students in this situation it's dreadful students are trained after Sandy Hook students are trained that's so sad that they they have training they for this. They know what to do. I know. If this happens. Like, they know they have to find, as you were saying, a it's... place to hide. And, like, I was reading um, some news, and it was heartbreaking. I was reading someone saying, it's so sad that kids in the U.S. know that they have to play dead in order to try and survive those mm. things. When they when they happen, so oof. yeah, it doesn't like you know darkest moments of our of our humanity, world wars. That's those are the moments where you understand, like you know, kids having to live through wars. That's what you would expect, you know, for for them, you know, to have to have that training. In here, when they, you know, schools that are maybe blocks away from your home, in a neighborhood that doesn't have any issues, like any, you know, no terrible issues. 
I I can't. And I can't. nowhere, I mean, nowhere in this planet, a kid should learn how to play no, that. There's no in order need. To, there's, there, there should be no reason. No, they no should be reason. Playing, laughing. Oh, play, being say kids stupid things, make faces. Be kid. Be yeah, a kid. Just you know, you have all your life ahead of you to be a dumb, stupid adult. Like enjoy being a kid. Carlos uh, Real mm -hmm. said, as artists, I feel that we are more sensible than average people. It's, it's the gift, quote unquote, that we have to produce art, but also it can live, it can live a, as hurt easily. I don't know what. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I do agree that we tend to be, um, more sensitive, um, or at least part of our lives that relies upon us knowing ourselves and being open to how we feel. So, we tend to be sensitive human beings, but, but there's people all over this world that are saying, "Oh my, this hurts. I hurt right mm -hmm. now." And um, that just goes to show you that it's it's not about, you know, it's not about feeling more or less. It's about feeling, you know, th that is the response any any human being that has a heart should have. Mm. Mm. I know, I know it's, it's no, tough I don't today. know. Yeah, because I know, I, I know. don't even know. I mean, there's uh questions, but I don't know no, if I, I should. It's okay, it's okay. Like, I can, I can work through it. I can, you know, we can just, and it's okay. A lot of people, um, I'm not saying that the people that are asking questions are not. You know, it's, it's not as if they're saying, hey, this doesn't matter and, and let's talk about painting. Please look, go back to painting. Or, you know, what I wouldn't want is for somebody to think that, hey, this is a painting channel. Like, don't, like, we don't, we're not looking for that. I'm sorry, but no, you know, I'm sorry. Like, this is when I would take like a stance and say, no, you can leave. If this bothers you, you can leave. It's okay. Now, and I'm not... Um, I, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel anything towards the people that want to leave. It's just that, hey, this is, this is the place where we, you know, we, we've always said that it's, um, it is about painting, but it's about a painting that accompanies life. Mm -hmm. Always, always. That has always been our purpose. It's not painting. Like, there's no painting. Is not the pot at the end of the rainbow. Painting is not going to cure anything. It's not going to make anything better. But um, it's hopefully a, a an act of you know a practice, an art practice that uh, is enabling you to understand something, to live through something, to reflect, to give yourself a time to reflect upon something. But um. But yeah, so so if if you're bothered by maybe the the fact that I don't know that uh, that this is our tone today, then it's okay. Like it's okay if that's not what you're looking for. But but um, but that's that's what that's what this is gonna be. No, and again. We're not saying that the people that are asking. No, 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 no. They're that they, they disregard they are, exactly that by asking a question about painting, they're saying that they don't care about what happened. No, no, it's it's okay. Like I'm painting through it, so don't like don't worry, don't feel judged about that. I have to be super in peace with myself to be painting right now, because if not, I would say, why am I? What am I doing? 
Like, what? why am I painting? And and I couldn't see myself today saying, hey, we're going to paint. This was horrible. Like that that sort of thing that I uh, told you guys about late shows um, where they were like, you know, monologue. This is horrible. And then switch off. Yeah, first and then, stand up comedy. Yeah, and then let's talk about food. Yeah. No, come on. Come on. Even if it's today, like it's um it's important to say no, no. It's like not today. So but not today, not marked by our absence, maybe. Because the easiest thing would have been to say, I can't paint today, I'm sorry. And it's okay. And then you come back tomorrow and you ease into it and you say, hey, things are better. And you just start laughing and making jokes. And um, But maybe, maybe it's better to say, hey, it's not okay today. And we're here. And we're here to say that it's not okay. And if that makes people feel uncomfortable and people are like, oh my God, cringe. Well, it's also okay to leave. It's also okay to say, okay, this isn't for you. So, so give me a give me a question, and we'll see. We can we can sort of power through it and work through it. And Ryan, I'll, I'll give said, it my best. Said, uh, hey Ryan, hey, never cut if you answer this. But what's the best uh, lead yellow tin? Okay, to use to copy a Caravaggio. Should oh, I wow. go light yellow? Lead tin or dark yellow lead tin? Oh, that's very, very specific. Um, and I don't know if I know quite enough. I was going to say lead tin yellow. Um, that is my extent of my knowledge because <laughs> that's the uh, brill that's like that bright yellow that they would use, you know, that they used in that time was uh, lead tin yellow, was uh, sort of like a, a lead based yellow, but it was a very You know, it was a very, very bright, very light yellow. It's what eventually um, Naples yellow um, sort of, uh, you know, Naples yellow took over for that role of lead tin yellow because it's not a common color to um, to find nowadays. You can find it, I don't know, in Rublev maybe. Well, I have a Rublev one, so. But I, I don't know if you have other colors, other manufacturers are uh, making it because it's a very expensive color to make. Uh, but I had no idea that there were different kinds of lead tin yellow. Maybe Michael Harding has some lead tin yellow. Um, I would say the lighter one because that's probably closest to what they had back then. Um, and what they did was, you know, they would start with the lead tin yellow as if you were doing lights with lead white. And then you you would kind of glaze um, earths, yellow earths, very transparent yellow earths on top of it. And that would make it look like a richer yellow. Um But that's about it, because there was nothing like this or nothing like cat yellow when, you know, when we were painting during the uh, Baroque. So, yeah, I would say just if you can buy lead tin yellow, you're, I think you're good. You'll be fine. If you're willing to spend um, 80, 90 bucks, 100 bucks on a color. Wow, that's the price of it? Yep, yep. I had no idea. Yeah. If you want, you could search. Um, lead... Mm -hmm. Tin yellow and Rublev, R U B L E V. That's a brand that I have. L E V L E V. I'm sorry. Mm. I want to see sixty dollars of fifty milliliters. Really? Yeah. No, I think it was well. 50. What is 50? Is this kind of. Uh, I still think it's. No, no. Super it's expensive. actually. Because I remember the one that I got at Peggy's that I didn't get it. Peggy actually bought it for me as a present. She actually gave it to me. Mm -hmm. um, it was 85, I remember. <laughs> yeah. At that. Yeah, at that time, it was 85. For sure. I'm, I remember it perfectly because I remember seeing it and thinking, I want to buy this. And then I actually told Peggy, um, oh, you know, I've always wanted to have that color, but it's a little too expensive. 
And then when I was, uh, when I finished the uh, workshop and I was about to leave, she gave it to me as a present and she was super sweet. I mean, talk about good people in this earth. Um, Peggy and Stan are amazing. Callum was saying, sending positive vibes. Yeah, that's, well, we should say that's all we can. But honestly, it's, um, especially for people in the U.S. and especially for um, people that are living in states that hopefully can do something about it, can elect officials that will do something about uh, what happened. Yeah. I know what you're saying, Callum. And um, yeah, good vibes for us that, you know, for all of us that are indirectly impacted and just moved to like tears. Um, yeah, but for for uh, for the people that that live through that, they need better. They need more. They need far more than that. And they they need more than that. And we owe them, we as humanity, and I always say we, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, like, it doesn't matter in which place, uh, which part of the world you're talking about. Like, any story involving people suffering and children suffering, it should mm -hmm. break us as humanity. Like, as a whole, we should always come together and say, no, no, no. It's the most sacred thing we have. No, I don't see any new questions. Okay. Oh, we can we can just paint. I don't even I don't I don't even know if this is like this is slowly there and not there, which I'm fine. I think I'm going to be okay with whatever happens in this painting today. So Let's just think about it that way. We're just going to keep each other company for each other each other company keep each other's company i don't forget we're gonna keep each, each other, other company, company or no? each other's company each other yeah and you know when when we're good we'll say we'll see you guys tomorrow um but meanwhile i mean if i see some yeah new questions i can uh read them yes yeah Jair Pineros was asking what are we painting so we're painting a mosquito and this is a, I think they're, I mean, well, they're probably not everywhere, but mosquitoes here are called, well, we have different types different, of mosquitoes yeah. this one. Um, and this is like a different species. I used to think that this was the, when I was little, I used to think that the one with the really long legs was the female and the one, the tiny one was the male mm -hmm. mm, because that's something that's um, pretty common in, in, uh, in um in insects mm -hmm. a female is is usually larger uh but then i realized it's not true they are the thing is they're not the same species so mm -hmm. we have mosquitoes that are smaller like your regular mosquito uh the one that drives you insane at night um and we have these these ones that i don't think they ever i don't think i'll I, i've ever gotten like uh, bitten by one of these. No, I don't think they they even bite. No, but, I think they do nothing. Yeah, but they yeah, and they're always they always appear when it like rains or when it's like cold or, um, yeah, but they're they're just there, you know, and they kind of fly awkwardly, and I guess that that's that's why people are are just disgusted by them and scared, and it's like oh mosquito, and um, but um, but the truth is they don't do much they really don't um so it's um i thought it was perfect moment to uh if i need to paint something and think about it but don't but not think about it it's it there's nothing more perfect than painting a mosquito right now so mm. we call them patas largas yeah i was looking and there's an article yeah. Saying that they are not giant mosquitoes, but 
Sankudo, how do I say? The thing is, I don't know how to translate Sankudo. Uh, let's see. I say mosquito, but... So they don't suck blood? Oh, no? according to this, it's yeah. also mosquito, but... I mean, it's different here in Colombia. I mean, right. we have mosquitoes and zancudos. Yeah, because usually what we call mosquitoes are the ones, for example, in the um, Amazon. The tiny ones. The Amazon where you, you're going to get malaria, like a mosquito, yeah, a but mosquito also bite. A mosca, una mosca. Oh, no, but the, those are flies. <laughs> so, mosca, mosquito, zancudo. Yeah, and but, we call it zancudo because it has long legs, like zancos, mm -hmm. you know, so zancudo. Mm. Sankos are... Um, I had no idea. What are sankos? Um, what do you call the things that... Stilts. So this would be like a... In our own kind of yeah, word. Stilts. Yeah. We would say this is a stilty, stilty mosquito. Mm -hmm. Because of its really long legs. Yeah, but I was reading that they uh, do no harm. Yeah, they don't do anything. So they don't eat anything. They don't bite. Uh, bite. Yeah. Picar yeah, they, is bite? They don't... Bite, yeah. Bite? I think a mosquito bites. Okay. Yeah. Es que dicen no pican. Yeah, but so. it would be a bite. It, it's not a sting. It's not... Um... Mm. Uh, acá también veo que se les dice mosca grulla. Grulla la como las... Grulla. So, like... Um... Oh, God. What's that called? Um... ¿Qué son? ¿Cómo se dice las grullas? In, in English? Sí. Si. Uh, crane. Cranes. There we go. So, long legs. Pretty much, you know, that's... They are... They differentiate themselves because of their legs. So... And the cast shadow those legs do has to be one of the most beautiful things in this planet. Yeah. So, I'm... I Every time I see... Uh, well, I mean, I see them all the time, but every time I see one, I always feel like oh, this is... I know that we talk about something being... Like, it's dumb to talk about something being paint-worthy. But every time I see one, I'm like, oh, this is the most paint-worthy thing ever. Mm, and we talk, when we went with your parents, um, there was a little... A tiny little kind of grasshopper, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, I took pictures of that one, too. Just on the wall. But they're larger ones. They're like, there are enormous ones in Bijeta. Mm -hmm. They're about that big. Oh, yeah. They can be huge. Like that. I had to catch one of those one time. Oof. That felt so strange. But sometimes I didn't hurt it. It was just like um, in the house. So it was banging, trying to find kind of like its way out. And it was banging um, like to... Uh, all the walls, mm -hmm. and um, so I just wanted to put it out. No, but the the hard thing is that, I mean, their legs are so so skinny. Yeah. That when you try to take them out, you can hurt them. Yeah, it's best can, to just leave them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can like broke one of yeah. their legs. So. Yeah. Well, you know, when I was little, ev and this happened, this would happen almost every time it would rain. My mother had, my mother was um, horrified of moths. Horrified. Just absolutely, she still is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely horrified moths of moths. Moths are not uh, that loved. I don't know why. Yeah, and the moths we have here, and I guess everywhere, I mean, there's like moths like these everywhere, but they're pretty large. They're about that big. Yeah, so about six inches, I would say they can be. And, um, and they're super dark. They're black. They're mm -hmm. they're like uh, not black black, no, but they're they're, they're like, like a brownish. Raw umber. Yeah, they're like a brown, like a dusty brownish. But they they're very dark, and when it rains, they usually seek like little corners so they mm -hmm. don't get wet because their wings are so fragile. Yeah. That I'm guessing that if they get if there's like a really bad rainstorm, they can get injured. Like their wings can get broken. And um, and so my mother used to believe, because it was a belief, I think, in her house and, you know, in her family, that if they were in the, in your entryway, in your doorway mm -hmm. uh, of your house, that it was horrible luck. Like somebody was going to die. 
And I've uh, heard that too with some uh, grillos. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so it's, you know, I guess it, it's weird. I mean, I looked for polillas, which yeah. is math in Spanish. And the first, um, like, suggested question yeah. is what's the luck? meaning? No, what's the meaning of a moth in your house? Yeah, yeah, my mother, nothing good. So when I was a kid, my mother used to be, she was horrified and she used to be, just take it, kill it or take it out, kill it. And and sadly, I had to, um, you know, I had to kill a bunch of, of these moths when I was a, a kid. But eventually, I was like, I did, these, they're not doing anything. They're just kind of fluttering clumsily on top of your head. But that's because they're horrified, probably. Mm -hmm. So then eventually, I tried to like take them out, which is very difficult. It's super, super mm -hmm. difficult. And I remember my mother would say, don't grab them because they can give you a disease, um, like the uh, dust that you would get from the, uh, from the wings. Well, but she's not uh, wrong. No. I mean, it's not a disease. But Escara? I was reading. I remember reading... her saying. Does that? Do you? Mm, did you find that word no. somewhere there? Well, not that one specifically. But I mean, it also depends of on the type of moth. Not like every moth has that. Okay. But they can sting you. Okay. Not because they want, but because they have like uh, venom in their. Uh, hairs like the tiny hairs in okay. the wings. I don't know if these though. And it says uh, that they can cause pain and uh, like skin eruptions. Mm -hmm. is he, is he, is he? I think you can use it like that. Yeah. But I think it's not everyone. Every uh, no, month. I don't know if our native, the ones that are native to Bogota do that to be honest. It says polilla de franela but I don't know. Yeah. And it's funny because we call them, we call ours mariposa negra. So black butterfly. That's what we call them. Oh, no. So not the ones we have. I mean, I've never seen this one. Oh, no, that's... Before. No. No, no, no. No. So no. Forget about the... Um, yeah, that, that what looks... What I was no, that looks like saying a about the venomous No, that's hairs. terrible. Yeah, because uh, moths can be uh, quite different. Between oh, very. each other. I mean, very. I I think there's one that's super cute. Mm -hmm. The the one that's super fuzzy. Uh, I'm gonna try to find it. But in here, the native one here, or no, I oh, think okay. It's, but it's in uh, Latin America. Okay. Yeah, the ones that are here, we get the smaller ones. At least in Bogota, the smaller ones that you know eat your clothes. And then we have the larger ones, which my mother is still horrified of. Well, I mean, the the ones I was talking about are cute, but I would still be terrified. Mm -hmm. Um, they're called poodle moths. Poodle moth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those those are. Um, I think. Um, oh, what are what are they called? Yeah, no, I would be scared. About, I'm not even thinking about a moth, but I'm thinking about a couple of artists. Um, oh God, Mike and oh, what are they called? They are they're twins. Could you they do? Could you search for twins photographers? Twins. Moth. I know it, it, this is moths. I know this is mm. Mike. No. You didn't get I anything? Just, well, I found like uh conjointed uh, No, 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 no. No, and they did like a uh, a whole book. I have it. It's called like Moth to art a Flame. Review. What's that? No, I'm seeing the New York Times art review seeing the cosmos uh in its moths and trees maybe. Um nope. Mm. Let me see. Um. Oh come on, cause I just I I can't remember their name right now. They're twins, so they do. They are geniuses. They're like some of the best photographers in in 
the history of photography, it's contemporary artists. Um, and they, uh, and because they're twins, they do, um, oh, Mike and Doug Starn. Mike and Doug Starn. Mike? Yeah. Doug? Starn. S T. Yeah, S T A R N. Like star N N N. That's what. There I... we go. Yes. So, they they do a they had a whole show on mm. on moths, yeah, on photographing like moths. Oh, but the photos are oh, and the one I was telling you, they have photos. Yeah, yeah, that's them. why I remembered. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a good memory. Yeah, no, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And they have some of my favorite, um, like if I was a collector, they have that Christ that um, that Nicolas Amori did. Um, he did a, a they painting. Own it? No, no, no. So sorry. So they did um, photographs, like these ensembled photographs mm -hmm. of uh, the same Christ that Nicolas Amori oh, okay, okay, uh, okay, painted, okay. Mm -hmm. which is based on Philippe de Champagne's uh, lying Christ, the, mm -hmm. the uh, dead lying Christ, mm -hmm. and um, and they both used it. And I I can't imagine a world where the person that wants one of those pieces doesn't want the other, the other one. one. <laughs> yeah, they should. Like, if I I don't know that person probably exists somewhere in this earth that owns one of those. And I would like to meet them and tell them, could I, to. could you give me a lot of money and could you let me see if I can get you, you know, this paint, this the painting, other one, the, yeah, the partner, because you should own both. It's like they're, they're not supposed to be separated. I feel. Is it this one, the one you're talking about? Yeah. So they did the a long bunch one. Of those. Yeah, because yeah. they have a smaller one. Yeah, they did a they did a bunch of um kind of exercises with with that one and then Nicolas Amori has also um like a painting slash sculpture slash installation based on that um on that Philippe de, Philippe de Champagne um Christ which is probably the most I'm not religious but I think it's the most beautiful Christ painting I used to think it was the uh, Velázquez crucifix mm -hmm. and um I think it's that one actually Well, at least for me. Um, Ariel Celeda said, Mexicans say moscos. Mm -hmm. Here in Argentina, mosquito. And mosca to the flies. Y como han dicho ustedes, zancudos a los que son como mosquitos, pero con patas largas. Sí. Y Ariel dice, can I make a question about linseed oil? Of course, please. Uh, there is, is there any difference in terms of quality between cheap lin linseed oil and the expensive one? I've, um, okay, sorry. I've searched and I don't find anything about that. No, Thanks you, in advance. No, you're not going to get, like, um, it's probably purified a little bit better, a, a little bit more, uh, filtered a little bit more. But aside from that, you, you would be fine. Like, if you go to a hardware store and just buy, you know, cheap, linseed oil like you can buy a gallon of linseed oil and it's um you'll be totally totally fine there was a time where i was using linseed oil to um to clean my brushes and i would never use like expensive linseed oil for that so what i did was i literally did what i just said which was um went to the um hardware store and got some some very cheap uh linseed oil that You know, they usually use it for carpentry work and woodwork. And um, and I used that, and it was perfect. It's perfectly fine. Margo Delgado dice, Camila Ogorman, en el curso de doméstica, mm -hmm. mostró un libro de ustedes en el que vi una pintura de un insecto. No sí. sé si era un mosquito, pero me pareció impresionante. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, por eso al, al comienzo, Margo, dije que um, había pintado ya un Algunos, mosco. Sí. Y había pintado una... Um, patas largas. Una arañita. No, un, mos un mosco. Patas pues, largas, ¿no? Perdón. Pues sí, había pintado un patas largas, uno de estos. Uh -huh. Y había pintado una araña. Uh -huh. Y no sé, me produce como mucha paz pintar eh, eh, esos, esos momentos de la naturaleza, yo creo. Entonces, hoy, hoy buscando cualquier pretexto para pintar, pues pensamos que... 
ese podía ser eh, mejor que cualquier otro. Marcelo Peralta said, Not sure if it's the right time, but I spend the morning wondering about your thoughts on something. Oh, please. I've been getting lost when painting. I yeah. just feel I have to stop. I don't know if I'm making progress. I feel really frustrated. Mm. But then, in the next day, I look at the painting with fresh eyes yeah. and feel better about it. Yeah. After contemplating it for a few moments, I managed to come up with a plan of action to get going again. Awesome. Oh, no. I managed oh. no, ca no came. No, maybe it was two came to come up. So Okay. This process is fine for me on itself. But it stops me from doing plein air paintings, which is something I'm really inspiring to. Sorry for the long text. No. It's not really a question. I don't expect a direct answer, just mm. some food for thought in a way. Oh, no, no, you're totally... Um, so I think what you're mm, perhaps hinting at is the... Um, mm, maybe how difficult it is to judge something properly while you're working on it as opposed to having time to reflect you know outside exactly outside that that um specific act of painting having you know a uh, a moment of time to reflect upon what you did um can be very very helpful and you're totally right you're totally right the the assessing of a painting that you have to do let's say in real time can sometimes be super, super difficult and feel like a very different practice than the one where you, you know, where you can just go to bed and and hope that fresh eyes, a good night's sleep um, can give you a sense of, of clarity that you didn't possess uh, during that painting. Uh, so during the painting of that, of that particular painting. So... Um, you're totally right. Um, I would say, as with everything in life, um, one thing is just different than the other, Marcelo. They're different. And and maybe we just have to kind of like accept that they're different and that they're going to feel different. And it's more about us. It's more about us saying, okay, this this is how this painting is is going to feel like. And this is what it's asking of me. And then this other painting is asking completely different things of me. And maybe because of our personality, because of our ability, because of, you know, many, many reasons, sensibility. Um, maybe one of those is a little bit easier for us to digest than the other. And that's fine. Um, but if, if, um, if you're wanting to be a plein air painter, um, yeah, teach yourself, train yourself how to feel okay with that you know, recognize how that feels and and don't be scared of that. Don't be scared of that feeling. Don't don't make it, you know, turn you into um, a more insecure painter than what you should be because it's it's not. It's nothing different. It's nothing worse. That's what I was trying to say. It's just different. It's just a little bit different. That's all it is. I was also going to say that I don't know if you agree with me, um, Nicolas. Yes, I'm listening, but, Danielita. No, no, no. Yeah, because I wanted to specify that I was telling you that I don't know if you agree. But I also think that, um, I don't know, Marcelo, I think you shouldn't uh, feel... I mean, if at the end you realize you need that time to assess your painting, you can still be a plein air painter. I mean, we can see Antonio Lopez. And he painted plein air and he went back and back another day and another day and another day. So I think that maybe if you really need time, like different times to execute what you want, uh, maybe it's going to take a little longer to do the plein air paintings, but you can still make them. Mm. So if that's the way you assess your painting and you know you want to be a plein air painting, It's not something that cancels the other one. Like, you can still uh, have time to assess your painting and be a plein air painting. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, the only thing I would say, Danny, is that um, many times, 
I mean, we use those things almost like interchangeably, but when we say plein air painting, um, a lot of people feel that they want to teach themselves how to be super direct. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe they see this beautiful sunset and it's a sky that you know that tomorrow is going to be different and mm -hmm. you want to be there and paint that yeah, yeah, yeah. at that moment. But but you're right. Plain air is plein Antonio air, Lopez. It's exactly. Yeah. Plain air exactly. is also Antonio Lopez. Plain air is also going to the same place again and saying, wow, these things changed and these things remained the same. Mm -hmm. And it's up to me to try to parse through all of that and to understand how to piece all of these things together. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I totally agree with you. It, and it, in the end, depends on the sort of painting slash painter that um, Marcelo wants to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, no, and I get what you were saying about uh, what people think of like plein air painting time execution. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to say that because I mean the definition of plein air can be bro is broader than that. So yeah, it's not an obstacle if you need time to assess your painting. Yeah. Um, Rebecca Caridad said, uh, ¿qué significa RE? -E? Regarding? Regarding planar topic. Yeah. I try to think of planar painting as information collecting as, a, as opposed to finished pieces out in go. the wild. I tell my myself I'm out there to make studies It takes the pressure off. That's pretty. That's pretty incredible. That's so good. That's a, a great mindset that I feel, um, you know, we could all have. And I'm glad that I'm hearing you say that because I'm also horrified um, to go <laughs> plain air painting. I feel super, super insecure when I when I have to. Um, and um, and I think in Menorca when we were there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of the exercises was painting outside and, and just acknowledging a bunch of changes that were happening. Mm, and um, and I think it was one of those first times that I've ever felt a little more comfortable with me, with this idea of me as a plein air painter, uh, instead of judging myself, you know, as, I don't know, I would always judge myself super, super harshly Because I would say, oh, these other really talented people, they can plein air and they can also do studio paintings that are amazing. And they can also do portraits that are amazing. Like they're really, really complete. And I, you know, I've, I've always been just horrified of, of doing these. And I, you know, I took it as a chance to just paint comfortably. It was the, it was funny because it was, one of the first times I feel that I was painting comfortably. Like I felt that I wasn't chasing anything. I felt that I didn't have to hurry through the painting. I just painted, you know, I just kind of told myself, just paint the same way you know how to paint and that's okay. It's going to be okay. And, um, and I enjoyed it, you know, beyond saying I did good or bad or, you know, if the paintings were great or not, it, Like, it doesn't matter. None of those things matter. But I really enjoyed it, which is something that I, my fear of it was um, not letting me enjoy it, you know, um, in my prior attempts, my many, many prior attempts. So I was happy that I kind of found a way to, um, to enjoy it. And what you're saying, it's great. Like compiling information, just saying, hey, I was here and this is to the best of my ability, This is how it felt like being mm -hmm. there. Um, that's amazing. I think that that's awesome. So Marcelo Peralta said, thanks. Just feel that right now I can't paint something in a four hour session. I end up doing four different one hour sessions. Uh, but that's great too. Yeah. Um, if it's what you need. I mean, when we were in Menorca, mm -hmm. mm, as you were saying, Uh, there was a day that everyone was doing like plein air painting. Yeah. And I had my, like the small sketchbook. Uh, and I did a s super small uh, square, maybe like this. 
and I wanted to do a plein air too. And I was there for the whole day and then the other day for... At the end, it, it can be like, I don't know, like 10 hours. If I like sum everything up and I see it and I still feel that I was like having... um, Yeah, like uh, what Rebecca was saying, just like putting information. I never completed a painting and I didn't feel that I wasn't doing plein air because I had to like revisit the place. It's just that... Uh, My painting takes uh, different times that maybe someone that can go out, do a plein air and have a two hour amazing painting. So, uh, and Marcelo said, that's great advice, Rebecca. Rebecca said, Marcelo, plein air painting really helps you kill the ego. Oh, yes. Uh, going out with the intention of painting bad paintings is good medicine for being human. Yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree about um, you never realize how comfortable it is to paint inside until you go outside and you try to paint because mm -hmm. it's um, it's a completely different experience. AJ said, I've been printmaking, which requires stand oil to add to the ink. Mm -hmm. I just learned that stand oil in 100% linseed oil mm -hmm. but is maybe is yeah, yeah it says because in it is the, yeah yeah it's 100% percent linseed oil yeah but it's boiled longer which means it doesn't rot the paper so why not use stand oil to add to the oil paint so it doesn't rot raw paper slash canvas i don't know i don't okay i'm So when I did etchings and when my mother um, used to do etchings, I am fairly certain that the inks, um, she, she mixed them with regular linseed oil. So I don't really know how polymerized oil, like stand oil uh, or heavy bodied oil or uh, sun thickened oil. I'm not entirely certain about why that would be less harmful for the paper. Um, because I, I don't, and this is probably ignorance on my part, but I don't know that I never heard of that. But again, yeah, I'm not saying I never heard of it as in, it's not true. I'm saying I've never heard of it as in, I just didn't, I was never aware of, of that. Um, but you know, I, I've seen my mother's etchings from years ago and they're okay. And the paper feels okay. Like there's no rotten rotting taking place so i don't know if if you know maybe we're speaking about long term uh what's best for your paper like really long term i'm speaking about like maybe 50 to 100 to 150 years into the future if you want to take care of your paper um but i just uh, it it wasn't the practice that i was um that i was familiar with Because, like, I'll tell you something right now. You you can um, it, traditionally what you would do with uh, uh, linseed oil was thicken it, and it's called sun thicken because they would lay it on the uh, window seal in the summer, you know, and and they would just have you know summer sun hitting the oil throughout those months, and it would eventually heat would eventually just very slowly, and that's why. It, it would be like a summer long uh, endeavor. Um, it would eventually polymerize the the oils. And what that, what that means is that the molecules just get like fatter and then they get closer together. So um, I don't know, maybe because they're bigger and they're fatter, it's harder for them to enter the fibers. Like we're talking microscopically, I'm sure, but... Maybe I'm just trying to rationally understand this, but maybe because they're they're kind of bigger, it's harder for them to to enter into the fibers, and that's what protects them. Maybe protects the paper a little bit more. Um, I may be completely wrong, so please correct me if if all my assumptions are off. Mm, Jay 
so Jay from from Menorca is here. Oh, that's wonderful. And Jay said, hey guys, I never get to catch this live, but the school year is almost over. How cool to come in on a story about Menorca. Oh, that's good, Jay. And yeah, it's wonderful happy to hear have from you. you. Yeah, to have you here. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Le Shireen yeah. said, uh, Rebecca, reading that helps so much in school. We go out so often now and paint and draw there, which I never did before, but it's really a lot more fun because I feel like I am part of that scene. Of the scene. Awesome. Mm, and Marcelo said, I can do bad paintings, yeah. I'll <laughs> try to go out with that mindset. Mm, Paulo Vasquez said, I have a question about varnish. Yes, please. Is it really six months beyond or you can apply varnish a little earlier, earlier if you use a quick drying medium like liquid? Thank you. Good day, everyone. Um, yeah, you can, you can, um, they usually say it because you have to let your painting set for as much as you can, because there is a, a high content of, um, solvent in the varnish, you know, varnish is pretty much resin, uh, diluted in turpentine. So that turpentine can be very damaging to your painting if it's not thoroughly dry. So you should need your painting as stable as you can have it. And the other thing is that you don't want to subject um, layers that are on top that are kind of slowly, slowly kind of moving and drying. You don't want to subject them to suddenly have to flash dry or something that you know dries very, very quickly on top of them uh, because that eventually can also make varnish crack. Um, so, uh, yeah, ideally what you want is stability in your painting. And the only way to reach stability in your painting is by letting things just set. So the thing that you read about varnish, you know, wait six months till you, you know, you give it the first varnish is exactly the same thing. This It's exactly the same philosophy, the same reasoning behind, uh, saying I'm going to do, a um, lead primed canvas, a lead primed linen, uh, and lead priming a piece of linen used to take, you know, well, it takes about an hour to do, but it, um, it used to be left untouched, undisturbed for like a year. So when classically you would see people saying, oh, this is a, a lead, you know, think about it, like this enormous canvas that Rembrandt was going to paint the night watch on. Well, that canvas had to be prepped a year before or at least six months before because you would you would never ever paint on lead primed on a lead primed surface if it hadn't dried for at least six months. And most of the time it was at least a year. So timing in painting is so different from what we experience nowadays. We are very quick painters now, very, very quick. But time was understood differently you know, hundreds of years ago, of uh, you know, four centuries ago, and um, and the that concept of time was letting them also um, appreciate the the notion of quite literally watching paint dry. So, um, yeah. So if you can, just you know, give it time. If you can, if you're in a rush, at least give it two, three weeks, three weeks maybe, and use like a synthetic varnish if you want. You could you could varnish with a retouch varnish if you're not super um, convinced about, you know, something that dries, something that, or, or, or putting a final varnish on your painting. Just put retouch varnish and you'll be super okay. It's totally fine. Margo Delgado dice, conocen el canal de YouTube eh, Chamberlain Paintings. Me parece muy interesante para ver el proceso de la pintura plein air. Uh, yo sí. Ese yo no. Sí, yo sí. Ese yo sí. Eh, sí lo he visto. Mira, te muestro de pronto. ¿Has visto? No, pues uh, es que está chiquitica no. la imagen. 
No, no that pero... looks like um no. Very San Francisco. I was gonna say very um very um deep in corn T-Bod um Yeah, yeah, but I've seen it. Eh, no sé por qué estoy respondiendo en inglés. Pero sí, ah, perdón, sí. 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 Eh, pero sí, yo sí lo he visto. Me salió sugerido la vez pasada. Sí. Y sí vi, si no estoy mal, sube varias sesiones eh, como haciendo pintura plein air. Como no, grabando no lo... el proceso de la pintura qué plein air. Qué sí, sí, sí. No, no lo conocía. Sí. A mí me salió sugerido. Es que. Eh, el artista sí. es, si no estoy mal, primo tuyo. No, ah. el papá de una, una persona como de una niña que es súper como famosa en internet. Ah, no sabía. Entonces, eh, sí. Pero no. O sea, eso o sea, van a decir de mí cuando Fer sea más grande. De pronto sí. <risa> pero no, no, no. Pero es un muy buen artista. O sea, no digo es que creo que o sea, me salió como en una noticia de una sugerencia, mm. pero, o sea, lo conocí porque decía como, o sea, aparecía como el artista, pero no le decían el nombre, sino que decían el papá de. Mm. Y bueno. después vi al artista y yo dije, ah, está súper chévere. Entonces, sí. eh, por eso me enteré y por eso me, me sonó el nombre apenas Margo lo dijo. Tienes que revisar el canal. Sí, es que yo soy más malo parece. con canales de arte, debo aceptarlo. Yo soy súper sí, como sí, sí, ignorante sí. con otros canales de arte. No porque no diga como, ah, no hay nada chévere. No, 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 sino que que, que hay veces ya, ya, con, ya con lo que hacemos nosotros para el canal, como que tengo mi... Mi shot. Cuota de arte. Sí, mi cuota de, de, de arte en A YouTube. A mí me pasa lo mismo. Yo tengo que... Entonces, consumir un contenido distinto. Sí. Igual lo que hablábamos, como sí. que dependiendo cada plataforma, sí. eh, tenemos un contenido distinto, entonces sí. O sea, un contenido que consumimos, que es distinto en cada una, entonces. is very I'm, i'm glad i let myself do this painting it puts my mind at ease and it's um i don't know if it heals anything but at least my mind is quiet and it hasn't been quiet since yesterday so i'm grateful for that mm, rishi kasharma Mm -hmm. was saying hi and Liet was saying hi too hey hey you both how Rish are you Rishi Rishi Kasharma hey Rishi and hey Liat. we're always kind of um mindful of saying and i think it's you a little bit more than i am if um if we're quiet while we're working mm -hmm. but i think it's okay today i think it's okay well and specifically today yeah because i mean um and as you were saying maybe someone joins yeah. and this is not the vibe they want today and that's it's okay. uh, perfectly fine because yeah. i do think that there's Uh, different ways of coping with yeah. things. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't um, I was hoping that painting helped me in some way. Because um, like I was telling you this morning, oh my God, I couldn't deal with it. I was like halfway crying, you mm -hmm. know, in the middle of the show for no reason. Um, and uh, and um, I was like, no, this is not, this is not a cool moment. Mm. This is not a good day. Not, no. 
And uh, and I'm glad, you know, that's why at the beginning I said, no, nah, painting doesn't, doesn't fix anything because I don't think paintings fix anything. The aim of a painting is never to to attempt to fix something. Maybe to make maybe to make something visible. That's probably where it's most powerful. Um, just to give you a a very set, very specific space, for, and tells you you can stop here. You can stop if you want. Like you can stay here for six hours. You can stay here for a year, you can visit me every day, or you can just, you know, glance at me, and it's okay, like, all of those are okay, uh, and I think that that's a wonderful thing about painting, but I I never, as much as I love it, I've never really felt like, oh yeah, this painting changed the world, like, this particular painting changed everything, I can't think of any painting that does that, I really can't, um, so, but but it's um it's quite wonderful that at least for the little moment that you spent that you just say I'm gonna devote all my energy, all my time, all my sensibility to looking at a mosquito. Like that is magic. That I don't know. It it really quite literally quiets everything down and. Maybe that's a, a good thing at times. It's funny that I have these um, smaller brushes but I always tend to go for the um, the big ones for the flats when I need to do something oh. very very thin and very kind of sensitive like I much rather start with a flat and then budge you know with the background or with the color that's right next to it to try to get it to the width that I want mm -hmm. Mm, but I never go for these like smaller ones But I mean, if you don't feel like you need them, yeah. If you're fine with um, the flat ones, because I mean, it's fine too. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no wrong answer there. They barely. I don't know if you've seen it, but many times they. Mm, they're so fascinating because they'll sit. Like, I'll try to paint it and then show it to you. Um, let me see. So the, um, that's too sharp. It's so subtle. So they, they will, they will sit there, like the leg goes yeah, down, like touch, and it bends, and it touches here, mm -hmm. almost like at, at the ankle. Not really at what would be the foot of the, uh, the foot of the uh, little leg, of the long leg, um, but it's it's almost like it sits at the ankle, mm -hmm. and then it's so amazing because you can see the. In the cast shadow, you can see where it breaks, like where where it's actually um, like finding its footing. Mm -hmm. But it's such a tiny, it's such a tiny place. A it's touch such a of nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's such a almost nothing, little bit of nothing place. So amazing. I don't know. 
I mean, maybe this was what we needed. Well, what I needed. But um, just being fascinated by a mosquito. So, Hayden Bryant. Yeah. Oh, because Liad was saying, sorry, I'm late. No. Just posted to the Discord for you. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, Hayden Bryan was saying, how do I join the Discord? So, it's um, all Liad. Yeah. You got to um, uh, send some money his way and he'll uh, let um, you in. Money? No. I'm kidding. No. Um, so, as we've uh, said before, Liad was super kind to create a um, Discord account that we sometimes use i would say but there's we try we yeah try. yeah yeah but there's a very cool um community there that share uh their paintings uh and liad is always super uh nice to tell everyone that we're live so uh you can know that we are streaming and you can uh, join by the link. Thing is that I don't know if I have the link here. I would have to check. But if not, uh, Liad can uh, send the link. Oh, but I think we can send can't the link here. Can't you just look for OPL and that's it? I think you can't. No. I still don't know how that works. So can you do that, uh, Liet? Like look for OPL and just... In Discord and then is just Is there say, Join. like a search bar in Discord? Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know either. How do you join Discord groups? <laughs> no. Um. So I, I think ours is open. So I... Think anyone can join? I think so. Liad said it's not public right now, so oh, no, were... you can't. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Misinformation coming from the source. Um, Ariel se le dice Discord siempre me confunde también. Sí, sí, la verdad nosotros eh, creo que también por eso nosotros no fuimos quienes creamos la cuenta. Porque no sabemos nada del programa, la verdad. Um, so maybe I can check if I have the link over here so I can mm -hmm. share it. Let me check. So I think I sent it to your mail once. Oh, I don't know. So, yeah, you can check my mail. I'm going to put Discord. Yes. Here it is. So, um, here it is. There's uh, the link for the Discord if you want to join. Perfect. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. And thank you, Liat, always. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Super generous. Oh, yeah. Um, Liad was saying, Danny, I just sent you the link so you can copy paste it. Thank you. Thank you. I realized, like, I remembered I had it in the mail. So, but thank you. Anything anything um, useful or important, Danny sends me. So, mm. not really, but. Eh, Margo dice, es curioso, a mí me pasó lo contrario que a ti, Danny. Supe de la hija youtuber de Chamberlain por su canal y tiene como 15 millones de seguidores en Instagram. Ah, es muy famosa. Sí, es muy, muy famosa. Ah, güey. Por sí. eso te... Sí, sí, sí. Un post suyo tiene como 1.5 millones de likes. Ah, sí, bueno. es súper famosa. ¿Y es super como famosa. lifestyle o...? Sí. Eh, sé que tiene un podcast también. Mm. Eh, de... Como... Que, no sé, de 
de la vida. No sé, como que habla de sí, como cualquier lifestyle. tema. Sí. Eh, a ver, espera. Mm, sí, tiene 15.6 millones de seguidores en Instagram. Ah, sí, no. Sí, es muy, muy, muy famosa. Sí, nosotros estamos a que dos años de estar ahí. <risa> pues, ¿de estar dónde? Eh, no sé, haciéndole un, un, sí. una vuelta 15. a la niña. 15.6 likes. Sí. Haciéndole una vuelta a la niña que nos manda. Sí. No, pero creo que no es niña. Es... A la joven. Sí, 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 sí. Perdón, sí. Eh, Lía was saying hello. Hi, Lía. Hey, Lía. Mm, Didi dice, hola chicos, si puedo preguntar por qué no transmiten en Twitch y usan YouTube de repositorio, ahí podrían tener las dinámicas de subs y donaciones. Y mm. saludo. Sí. Eh... Rep mm, lo que pasa es que yo creo que eh, la mayoría... No, pues la gente que nos conoce, que conoce lo que hacemos, es porque conocía los videos editados y pues en la cabeza, en nuestra cabeza, queríamos transicionar a poder hacerlos en transmisiones, pero nunca pensamos como en otra plataforma. Sí, como migrar de una plataforma a otra es súper es complejo. Súper complicado, exacto. Mm, y también... Pues en algún momento yo pensé que se podía hacer como un stream duplicado, pero me enteré que eso creo que no está permitido. No, no se puede. Exacto. Lo que hacen es, es re... Es, es, Repostear. Sí, ellos, seguramente la gente que hace el stream lo está grabando al tiempo en el computador uh -huh. de ellos. Sí, y lo sube después. Y lo que hacen es como, pues ya tienen el contenido y lo suben al canal de YouTube si quieren eh, tener ese contenido doble. Uh -huh. Pero pero sí, no 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 lo habíamos pensado si, si somos así súper honestos. Sí, no. no Y también creo que mucha gente, cuando esos temas se han tocado, sí. mucha gente que que nos acompaña acá en las transmisiones, no utiliza Twitch, incluyéndonos a nosotros. Y mucha gente, como yo, por ejemplo, no sabe bien cómo utilizarlo. O sea, no, no es una plataforma que yo utilice todo el tiempo. Entonces creo que, pues sí, mucha gente nos decía que, que no sabría cómo conectarse. Pero... Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo se llama la persona? Discúlpame. Didi. Es que Didi, honestamente nuestro... O sea, nuestro trabajo no depende tanto de subs. Entonces, eh, digamos que el, el dinero que podemos nosotros recibir de videos es muy poco y pues eso no, no nos importa tanto porque la, digamos que la, la dinámica que nosotros tenemos eh, y que es como la que hace que esto sea sostenible como, pues, como una manera de vivir es que nosotros vendemos las pinturas. O sea... La, nosotros dependemos es de la venta de pinturas y creo que estaríamos súper, súper, súper lejos de estar de llegar a un punto donde subs o donde vistas, vistas no signifiquen. pudieran estar como cerca a, a, o a llegar a reemplazar lo que es una venta de una pintura. Entonces, toca, ahí nos toca reconocer en qué, en qué nos en que somos parecidos a muchos canales y en, y en que nos diferenciamos como fundamentalmente de muchos otros canales, entonces... Sí, porque nosotros ya hemos eh, sido súper abiertos con eso uh -huh. eh, y yo creo que la gente a veces se imagina que uno se puede ganar mucho más con vistas. O sea, y hay pues gente sí. que sí. No, 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 pero digo es como que de pronto... Eh, un canal como el de nosotros podría ah. estar generando como una cantidad grande de plata y no. No. Nosotros nos ganamos como 5 dólares por video. Nos ganamos como 120 dólares mensuales. Uh -huh. Por ahí. Eh, entonces, sí. Eh, Camila Ogorman dice, 
Y yo me muero si tengo que aprender a manejar una nueva plataforma. Soy de la generación anterior a la tecnología. Sí, yo creo que mucha gente pero, le costaría incluyéndome. Pero nosotros que somos, o sea, bueno, a ver, no somos eh, ni Samu ni Fer. Uh -huh. Pero no somos tampoco tecnófobos. Y nosotros muchas veces hemos visto como, bueno, vamos a ver Twitch un rato. No, no. Y siempre terminamos como... Arrepintiéndonos sí, primero sí, sí. de la decisión tomada. Sí, encontramos porque son como cosas súper cosas super extrañas. Sí. Pero yo creo que es por lo que te digo, por lo que hemos intentado ver Twitch en el televisor. Y no, entonces, pero, no, pero porque yo, pienso yo busqué que sí. y si no estoy mal, de pronto Didi, si sabe más de esto, nos puede eh, corregir. Pero si no estoy mal, en el televisor solo se puede ver lo que está en vivo en ese momento, no lo que está guardado. Pero en Twitch, Entonces, pero siempre Twitch damos normalmente como es, con un horario. Es un live stream. Sí, pero damos con un horario donde las transmisiones son como súper extrañas para nosotros, por lo menos. No, y se ve que hay una multitud de jóvenes que socializan <ríe> dentro de, de Twitch. Me acordé un día... Nosotros, creo que fue como el primer segundo día que estábamos tratando de mirar Twitch y yo no podía la risa cuando me di cuenta que llevamos como 20 minutos tratando de entender de qué se trataba una transmisión donde estaba una niña comiendo mandarina y hablando sí. sobre una tarea que tenía que hacer, si no estoy mal. Sí. Nosotros decíamos que estamos viendo. qué pena, de pronto muy papá acá y todo. Pero estaba comiendo mandarina de una manera espantosa, sí. espantosa. ¿no? Entonces, muchachita, sí. me hace el favor, coma mandarina bien. Cierra o sea, la boca. Por Dios, coma mandarina bien, que está transmitiendo. Pero eh, era muy loco porque ella hablaba... Hablaba como, no, en español, primo... pero era como si fuera el español de otro planeta. Sí, no, y decía, no, y sí, yo le conté a mi primo y eran, yo no sé, por ahí unas... No sé cuántas personas habían conectadas, pero había muchísima gente. Sí, siempre son como, o sea, 15 comentaban... mil personas viendo. Y, y 15 dice, mil ¿Qué? personas comentándole sobre no, sí. La, exageré yo un poquito vi, ahí. Pues sí, un poco, pero eran pero... como 4 mil personas conectadas, que eso es un montón. Y era gente escribiendo como, sí, yo vi lo de tu primo, sí, tu primo, no, y tu tía tal cosa. Y yo decía, ¿qué es esto? yo Sí, muy curioso, muy curioso, pero, pero de pronto algún día nos... No, 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 no. Nos, Nos ponemos como las pilas para aprender un poquito más sobre Discord. Pero es un sitio curioso. Pero quién sabe. O sea, igual yo creo que de pronto hay personas como tú y yo que entran ¿Sí? y dicen, eh, no encuentro lo que quiero, o sea, no encuentro el tipo de contenido que quiero ver y de pronto nuestro contenido podría ser algo de eso que quieren ver. ¿Sí me entiendes? Sí, de sí. pronto. De pronto. Pues... Si uno, bueno, igual yo si dije... Uno se va que... a ganar plata por comerse una mandarina mal. No, pues sí. Eh, no, pero yo no podría. Imagínate uno... No, no sé. Si yo fuera en un bus y esa muchachita estaba comiendo mandarina al lado mío, me bajo del bus. Me voy. Yo digo, no, no es posible, niña. <risa> Ariel Celeda dice, eh, imagínate, Nico, gente en vivo en Twitch comiendo en una pileta. Ja, ja, ja. Ah, verdad. ¿Verdad eh, que hay gente gente en el jacuzzi? Ay, también vimos una sección tina. que a mí me parece súper curioso. O sea, pues de verdad hay, como dicen, eh, para los gustos los colores. Porque vimos gente que estaba durmiendo, como que transmitía, se transmitía durmiendo. Entonces me acuerdo que vimos un señor como... Sí, se sentó en la cama, se acostó y se puso la cobija y nosotros, ah, quién sabe qué va a hacer. No, no hacía nada. O sea, estaba durmiendo. Mm. Y había gente comentando como, buenas noches, que sueñes increíble. Buenas noches, qué chévere verte dormir. <risa> curioso, curioso, curioso. Sí, no. Eh, Didi dice, puedes ver los streams en diferido entrando al canal del creador. Sí, entiendo lo que dicen. Igual deberían intentar buscar acceder a las funciones de streamer de YouTube que permite donar y tener subs aquí en YouTube. Sí, ¿sabes que, O sea, nosotros las tenemos ahí disponibles. Uh -huh. 
pero no la es hemos... Que acti activarlas. Lo que pasa sí. es que no hemos leído un poco sobre... No, y también cómo por es. ahora es como redemocrático así el canal. Entonces, pues leemos comentarios del de que está... Sus de o sea, leemos comentarios de todo el mundo. Uh -huh. Entonces, a mí también se me hace chévere como que no no se tenga que estar suscrito para que uno lea los para comentarios. Para que le pongan atención, sí. Exacto. Eh... Julia. Julia. Julia dice, hola. hola Llegué Julia. y vi rápido la pintura como algo súper abstracto y se ve increíble. Ahora estoy adivinando que es un zancudo. Es, sí, es un zancudito. Un patas largas. Son patas largas. ¿Será que todo el mundo le dice patas largas? Yo creo que sí, ¿no? Yo creo que sí. Voy a buscar... Pues aquí en Bogotá, aquí en Bogotá digamos, al menos. Patas largas. Sí, busqué... Mm, bueno, me salió una araña. Es que hay Daddy Long Legs, es una araña. ¿Daddy? Uh -huh. Se llaman Daddy Long Legs. Pon ¿Y la... por qué Daddy? Pues, no sé, mi amor, no. Yo no la, yo no la bauticé. No, pero sí, es que en mi cabeza no... Daddy... Sí, ponle, pon Daddy Long Legs. O sea, yo sé que suena, suena medio raro. Sí. Como, sí, no, no sé. Es que no, o sea, me da curiosidad, es como de dónde no sé. salió el origen. Bueno, y nosotros diciendo que súper random alguien comiendo eh, mandarina en un stream. Y tú y yo, yo estoy buscando el origen de Daddy Long Legs. Mm -hmm. Uh, the common name Daddy Long Legs. ¿Eso no era un libro? Yo me acuerdo que Likely me había... came about because of their small oval body and long legs. Pues sí, pero. Yo me acuerdo que había. And the una... name uh, Harvest Men because they are most often seen in large numbers in the fall around harvest time. Still. I think that's not an explanation for the name. Um, Eso era una animación, ¿sabías? Un anime. Daddy Long Nails. Lo pasaban. Just get Long Nails. <laughs> sí, lo pasaban aquí en televisión colombiana. Y se llamaba Papayito Piernas. Le decían Papayito Piernas Largas. Cacaito. No, no, Cacaito. Cacaito Piernas Largas. Busca Papayito Piernas Largas a ver si sale. A ver. Papayito. Era una niña y el, y el papá, no sé. Sí, Daddy Long Legs, Papayito Piernas Largas. Papayito Piernas Largas. Novel no by Jen Webster. Ah, pero era un libro. Sí. A 1912 epistolary novel Ajá. by the American writer Jen, Jan, Jean <laughs> Webster. It follows the protagonist, Jerusha, mm -hmm. Judy Abbott, as she lives an orphanage and is sent to college by a benefactor whom she has never seen. Wow. I didn't remember the... Uh, Content? The lore of uh, Daddy Longlegs. I remember just watching it in the... Um, in the... Th the third of Colombia's three channels that we had when I was growing up. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's where you would get a lot of anime in the 80s. Mm. But I can't see an explanation of why they call... Because, I mean, long legs, I get it. But, but daddy... I mean, yeah, but you're making it sound like a little weird. No, 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 it's just... It's daddy long legs. Yeah, no, I get it. But if you think about it, why daddy? Mommy long, le long legs too? That would sound weirder. That's a... What? ¿Qué es esto? Oh, no, I think it's like a toy. Okay. I don't know what you're referring it to. It looks like uh, Betty Spaghetti. I don't know if you've... Uh, Heard I think about I, yeah, those? I know, I know her. I loved my Betty Spaghetti's. 
I know their daddy long legs are um well everything is like if there's an insect it um it thrives in Australia. So I know they have daddy long legs in Australia. I think so. I'm almost sure. Mm. Eh, Didi, hablando sobre mm, lo de Twitch o lo de sí. YouTube Stream. Sí. No, streamer de YouTube. Bueno, no sé cómo sí. se llama. Dice, eh, good vibes, claro, de acuerdo. Eh, lo digo porque quiero es aportarles con algo poquito, ya que no puedo comprar una pintura. Ay, Ay Didi. muchas gracias, Didi. Sí, qué, qué bonito comentario, muchísimas sí, gracias. Sí, sí, sí. Y ya Didi nos aporta mucho estando acá. Sí. La sí. compañía siempre es como lo que es más importante para nosotros. Mm. Pero sí, hablando de lo de YouTube, toca revisar bien qué es. Sé que hay varias opciones. Yo nunca he... Nunca me he puesto en la tarea de revisar uh, bien eso. No sé tú. No sé tú, pero yo. No sé tú. Eh, eh, no, no, no lo he visto. Estoy sincero porque no me... Pues, por ahora no me importa. Uh -huh. Por ahora me gustan las cosas como son. Pero y es... O y sea, pues, eso de YouTube Y me gusta stream. saber que Didi nos quisiera ayudar... Sí. Eso me gusta. Pero, 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 pero mi pues, pregunta es, ¿eso de YouTube Stream tiene que ver solo con cosas de plata? O sea, ¿no tiene que ver con pues sí, porque, nada distinto? Pues, a ver, porque es que si tú, si tú pones un botón de Join, o sea, para que la gente se pueda como suscribir al canal, uh -huh. que eso es lo que les da la posibilidad No, de... pero creo que no es suscribirse. Es sí, o sea... Al, como ser un miembro, eh, Exacto. Pues sí, pues... No, porque suscribirse... Exacto. Bueno. Tú te puedes suscribir ya. Exacto, sí. Pero entonces, ese, ese join, esa... No, no sé cómo decirle a eso. Entonces... ¿Unirse? Eh, unirse al canal. Sí, ¿no? Eh, no, sí, sino que pues es lo mismo. Al final es como igual. Eh, eso es lo que te da la posibilidad de que haya como un chat paralelo. Que ah, es lo mismo que hay ya, en Twitch, ya, ya. que es un chat como aparte. Ah, y entonces, pues tú sí. lees las, los comentarios de la gente que está en el chat aparte. O sea, la idea es como que si... Que tú le paras bolas más a la gente que está pagando que a la gente que no. Ay, pero eso no. Pues no es chévere y nuestro canal la verdad es chiquito todavía, entonces no, no hay ninguna necesidad como de crear esa ilusión de que es más exclusivo. Pues además estaríamos como sin hablar. No, y es mentira. O sea, sería mentira, si ¿sí me entiendes, como diciendo, ay, esto es para la gente para que realmente les... Les paremos bolas. Parar, mm. parar bolas es como prestar atención aquí en... Prestar en... atención, tam, como... Prestar atención, sí, es, ¿Sí? es universal, sí, sí. Bueno. Eh, pero la realidad es que nosotros le ponemos atención a todo. <risa> pues a lo que nos escriben. La verdad es que no hay tanto como para que uno diga... Ah, esto no, estamos abrumados. Pero esto igual no si hubiera leer. tanto, yo también pondría... O sea... Yo siempre me preocupo como por ir eh, sí, atrás siempre... en el chat para mirar qué preguntas no sí, respondí. Sí, sí. Obviamente, cuando es como un bot, pues lo borro. O... ¿No? Yo o creo Julia. que ya. O Julia, pues la bloqueo. Sí, pero de resto... <risa> Mentiras, Julia. Pero... Sí. No, no, no. O sea, no. Eh... De resto, todo lo... todo lo leo. Lo que no leo a veces es cuando... Eh, hay conversaciones entre una persona y otra. Ah, no, sí, eso sí es entre ellos. Entre ellos, exacto. Ellos, ellos, pero, ellas. pero no, yo trato de leer todo y yo creo que sería así. O sea, lo que yo te decía, que si el chat se moviera súper rápido porque hubiera mucha gente. Sí. Yo creo que yo con tal de tratar de leer todo, eh, podría durar respondiendo las preguntas de los primeros cinco minutos todo el video. Para no saltarme a nadie, como para no, sí, como para no sentir que de pronto no leí algo que no era. Exacto, entonces así somos nosotros, pues, para que nos vamos a, para que vamos a dar una, una ilusión de, de exclusividad, si no, no somos eso, o sea, no nos interesa mucho eso, entonces. Margo Delgado dice, y se les agradece un montón la atención que nos prestan. No, ¿qué tal? 
Eh, no. Ustedes son nuestra compañía también. Sí, sí, sí. Y si son nuestra compañía, pues tienen el, tienen el mismo valor y, y tienen el mismo aporte que nosotros le podemos dar a ustedes. Sí, y es recíproco. O sea, igual a nosotros de nada nos serviría estar sentados acá hablando solos. Sí, para eso ya para tenemos eso apagamos, el resto del día. Sí, para eso, eso es lo que hacemos los la dos. pantalla y hablamos como eso hablamos es lo que todo hacemos el los dos todo el tiempo. Mm, Julia Tobar dice, jajaja, ja, ja, ey. Y dice, ¿ya vieron el eh, trailer de Obi-Wan Kenobi? No. Yo vi el que salió ya hace como un mes, Julia, pero no, no, no he visto si hoy salió algo nuevo, si le soy sincero. Eh, Irvin Torres Art uh -huh. dice, hola Nico y Dani. Hola, hola Irvin. Irvin. ¿Cuál es su opinión de bienales y convocatorias nacionales e internacionales como Portrait Society, Society y la del MEAM? Eh, eh, yo, yo traté de entrar, bueno, a, no a la... No a la gringa, no a la Portrait Society of America, pero sí intenté al MEAM, a figurativas. Una vez, no quedé, no, no pasé ni siquiera a la ronda. Eh, y a la que mandé que me dolió más fue a la, a la de BP, a la inglesa, a la británica. Eh, y me dio duro. Me puse súper triste porque pensé que mandaba una pintura fuerte uh -huh. eh, y estuve re triste, me acuerdo, muchos días, muchos, muchos días. Mm, y, y al final, pues, bueno, será, de pronto es contentillo que uno se da y, y pues uno tratando como de explicarse cosas ahí, eh, porque seguramente uno no ve ningún problema cuando uno pasa las convocatorias y cuando uno lo escogen. Todos los concursos son buenos y si uno gana premio, pues todos son... Sí, el mejor concurso Es el mejor concurso y es el más difícil de entrar y es como el, que, el único que vale la pena. Eh, pero la realidad es que, no, yo, yo quería, o sea, yo, yo quería... Mmm, y, y más allá de querer estar, era también como una búsqueda ahí toda extraña de validación por medio del el premio. Como que si entro a este premio y si logro ganar algo, la gente me va a entender como un artista serio, como un artista que vale la pena. Eh, y la verdad, eso es, eso es una... La realidad es que es, es, un, es una fuerza, es una... Eh, capacidad demasiado poderosa que uno le está otorgando a, a un premio porque pues el premio no tiene por qué ser eh, como de así de influyente en lo que es uno como artista el premio es simplemente eso es un premio, o sea, y ya y es un premio que está curado todos los años y que tiene como unos intereses todos los años y que esos intereses no siempre son los mismos eh, entonces con eso no quiero decir que gente talentosa no se gane esos premios, no seguramente gente muy talentosa se los gana Pod podrá uno no estar, estar o no estar de acuerdo, eso ya es otra cosa y podrá uno gustarle o no gustarle lo que ganó, normalmente si no quedamos si no, si no entramos, nunca nos va a gustar lo que ganó, porque pues uno ahí va a estar medio ardido con esas cosas, pero, pero la realidad es que, pues gente que por alguna, o sea, debe haber alguna razón por la que esa gente mereció ganar y uno tiene también que aceptar eso y tiene que celebrar eso y ya. Yo creo que lo que yo aprendí en esos momentos donde no, pues no gané, no quedé, o sea... No gané nada y ni siquiera entré a los premios. O sea, ni siquiera entré a los premios, entonces no. Ni siquiera tuve la opción de ganar nada. Aunque en mi cabeza yo ya estaba como haciendo el discurso de agradecimiento por el premio. Eh, Pero eso siempre pasa. Ah, sí, somos todos los artistas. Nos imaginamos, ya nos gastamos la plata del premio antes de que, de que de mandar el sobre en sí. el correo. Sí, sí, sí. Eh, eh, no, lo que yo aprendí así doloroso fue 
pues eso, que, que esos, esas instituciones y esos premios y esos espacios pues son chéveres, uno no niega que son chéveres porque pues por eso es que a uno le llaman la atención, pero no deberían nunca ser los responsables de darle valor a lo que uno hace, nunca, es un premio, simplemente es un premio y, y chévere por el que se lo gana, pero por toda, no quiere decir que todas las otras personas que no ganaron o que no pasaron son menos artistas, somos menos artistas, porque yo no... A mí lo que pasa es que me dio tan duro el ego que nunca, nunca volví a mandar a premios, nunca. Camila Ockerman dice, claro, aunque uno apunte con las expectativas bien bajas, no entrar duele. En mi sí. caso, dice ella. No, pues yo estaba, sí. Dani me conocía, nos conocíamos en ese momento. Pues como así ya estábamos juntos. Sí, por eso. O sea. Dani me conocía, no. Pues es que cuando nosotros nos conocimos, creo que duramos muy... Para mí, haberte conocido fue estar contigo. O sea, fue muy sí, rápido eso, también. Sí, fue muy... lindo. Pero igual ya llevamos harto tiempo. Ya llevamos, sí. Sí, ya, sí, sí. A lo que me refería, ya estábamos, ya estábamos juntos, juntos, sí, sí. perdón. Eh, no, y Dani supo que me dolió mucho. Sí. En ambos casos me dolió mucho. Pues sí, incluso cuando es en cosas hasta um, como a una escala más eh, nacional, yo también he contado que yo traté de pasar a unos premios, ¿Mm? a una, ¿qué es eso? Como una exposición. Sí, sí. Y yo presenté eh, mi trabajo de tesis, que para mí eh, sigue siendo un trabajo... Extraordinario. Es. Muy significativo para mí y siento que tanto la obra como toda la investigación que hice eh, pues es muy significó mucho para mí sí eh, y eh, yo no pasé y me dio muy duro porque como dice Nicolás yo se, sentí como como si no estuvieran validando todo el trabajo que yo hice o sea es como sí en su cabeza es bueno el proyecto, pero no lo suficiente para que entre acá. Y yo creo que eso es lo que más le duele a uno. Mm. Pero... Sí, otorgarle... Ese es como el riesgo de otorgarle tanto como poder sobre uno. Uh -huh. A ese tipo como de, de instituciones slash premios. Porque... Pues no sé, o sea, yo creo que pueden ser el objeto de, de felicidad cuando uno, cuando uno es, o sea, afortunado y se lo gana, uh -huh. pero, pero no deberían ser nunca objetos de, de como hacerle cuestionar a uno su, como su valor como artista. Es, ese no puede ser, o sea, la, la contraparte de, de que si no entré no puede ser que entonces yo no soy nada. Yo no valgo nada. Y, y nosotros, pues es que decirle a un artista que sea más generoso consigo mismo es como, no, nosotros estamos hechos para ser como demasiado duros con nosotros mismos. Sí, sí, sí. Entonces, sí, sí. todo lo que haga que nos tratemos peor, pues también es como, uno tiene que ser cuidadoso con eso. Pero son premios, es como ir a una exposición, o sea, al final hay cosas... Yo creo que un premio debería ser siempre así, o sea, que uno ve cosas rarísimas y distintas y, y uno termina como contento con unas y bravísimo con otras y termina diciendo, no, esto, ¿cómo escogieron esto? Uy, ojo, esa gente no tiene idea. Porque yo creo que todo, toda la gente sale así, como, uy, había cosas buenísimas, pero no, ¿cómo le dieron el premio a estas porquerías? Sí. Eh, yo, independientemente del premio, la persona o el artista, o si entró o no entró, siempre escucho como ese tipo de comentarios, siempre. Y, y, y habla más de que, no, pues es que los premios no están hechos para satisfacer a, a un ser humano, o sea, no están hechos para que nosotros sintamos que estamos representados totalmente ahí. Pues sí, es que igual si satisface a uno, ya con eso va a quedar otra persona insatisfecha. Sí, exacto. Sí, para que gane una, pues tiene que haber eh, muchos que no de ganan. los escogidos 30 que no ganaron y ya. Y de los que se presentaron muchos que ni siquiera ah, están elegidos. Sí. Exacto. Eh, Irving Torres Art dice, gracias Nico. Eh, 
A mí también me pasó con varias locales y nacionales y creo que más que nada buscaba, busca uno un poco más de exposición de la obra, sí. ya que batallo mucho para vender. Pero puede haber otras cosas, Irving. Puede haber como otros caminos que no necesariamente sean, sean esos premios, porque pues qué tal hay uno rogando que le den a uno la posibilidad de, de exponer. Eh, yo no sé, Irving, si hay ferias en donde usted pueda pagar eh, su puesto, por ejemplo, como pagar, pagar un puestico donde uno pone su pintura. Eh, Irving dice, yo digo que más que el ego es el trabajo invertido las horas en julio iré a Ciudad de México a probar suerte unas semanas y daré un taller de óleo espero poder crecer más ahí qué bueno, qué bueno Irving eh, Julia dice pues allá, eh, Irving, el arte figurativo allá tiene, tiene una salida o sea allá hay varios colombianos que conozco que están trabajando que les ha ido súper entonces con base en la experiencia de ellos le diría que sí, o sea, sí, sí se puede ir a esos espacios a um, como re, redefinir el, el tipo de artista que, que es uno. Eh, si no se falus dice mosquito patas largas zancudo, uh -huh. exactamente. Exactamente. Eh, Julia decía yo. Uh -huh. dice, me pasa igual, en mi cabeza me ganó todos los concursos en los que participo y luego me da durísimo no pasar ni a los seleccionados sí, 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 sí es una desinflada yo en ese en ese del VP, Julia, de que además que charrera que el premio más grande de retrato en pintura era patrocinado por la British Petroleum, o sea manos untadas de derrames de petróleo en el océano cuando uno se ganaba ese premio pero cuando uno se ganaba, ¿no? Uno. Ya estoy yo metiéndome, diciendo que yo me hubiera podido ganar algo de eso. Pero eh, yo me acuerdo que el, me sentí horrible porque a uno le llega un correo primero de si uno pasa a la ronda que lo van a juzgar en físico. Porque pues a ese, a ese premio mandan, creo que es miles de personas en el mundo y luego lo cortan como a cientos, como a doscientos, póngale... Y, o menos, sí, un poco menos, y luego de esas personas, pues, uno tiene que mandar en físico una, una pintura. A mí me costó como tres millones y medio de pesos, mm. en ese momento como más de mil dólares, mil y picho de dólares, yo creo que eran como mil, mil quinientos en ese momento. Mandar esa pinturota mmm, para que la juzgaran y para no entrar. Entonces, cuando... Cuando yo pasé, yo dije, ya, o sea, pasé, si pasé esta ronda, o sea, si les gustó la imagen, el, el TIFF, obviamente apenas vean la pintura, los voy a enamorar. Yo decía, no, ya, 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 como que metí el pie ahí en la puerta, que era lo único que yo quería, y en mi cabeza yo decía, y ahora sí me van, sí, me van a ver como pintor, y si me ven como pintor, ya estoy seguro que les va a gustar. Entonces, en mi cabeza... Uy, o sea, yo me acuerdo del nerviosismo que yo tenía cuando... Porque a uno le dicen en qué fecha van a dar los resultados. O, por qué, o más o menos en qué fechas. Y yo me acuerdo cuando sacaron a los ganadores. Y yo decía... porque eh, eh, O oh, no, no hay ganadores... Eh, le dicen a tres personas que han sido seleccionadas y dentro de esas tres personas van a dar primero, segundo y tercer puesto. Uh -huh. Y entonces yo me acuerdo que cuando los sacaron a, a las tres personas y yo juraba que yo podía estar dentro de las tres personas, obviamente. Yo, uff, primer, o sea, primer golpe, dolor. O sea, el dolor de decir, bueno, yo juraba que yo podía estar entre las tres, no estoy, no importa. Y después de eso mandaron la lista de los seleccionados. Para la muestra. Para como la para muestra, la... para la exposición, Exacto. que es una exposición como itinerante que hacen en, eh, por todo el Reino Unido. Entonces es súper bonito porque lo que, lo que dice Irving, la, la exposición ahí es súper chévere. La mm. exposición a 
distintos ojos, distintos mercados. Sí, que la gente lo conozca, Exacto. conozca el trabajo de uno. Súper, súper importante. Y me, me llegó mi, mi coso de... No. Uy, yo me acuerdo. Es como si se me hubiera para, paralizado el mundo. Yo decía... Oh, no sé, incluso yo creo que escribí, hice como un post, creo, en Facebook. Oh, yo no me acuerdo, creo que sí. Y me dolió resto. Uf, ese me dolió resto, resto, yo me acuerdo. Y después entendí, ya con el paso del tiempo entendí que, que no, no, no es nada, es una exposición y ya. O sea, la realidad es que no es nada. Sí, no... pues igual en el momento duele como si fuera el fin del mundo. O sea, claro, uno porque yo siente todo que... le, le he apostado como a todo. yo O sea, yo decía, estoy 100% seguro que este es como el momento en el que mucha gente me va a conocer. Lich dice en el blog, jeje. <ríe> sí. Y, y, y no. Es que esos momentos donde uno dice, es que ahora sí me van a conocer. Sí. Y, después, y uno como que siente que la gente le dice, no, ya lo conocimos y pues usted no es gran cosa. Sí. Tranquilo, o sea, ya lo conocimos, sí. Y sobre todo lo que tú dices, que si en tu cabeza tú decías, tengo que pasar, o sea, si ya les gustó la imagen y me la piden para verla en persona, es porque ya. Pues el problema es que en tu cabeza apenas te dijeron la queremos ver en persona, pues tú ya te coronaste. Yo, o sea, yo ya estaba bajando peso para la ceremonia de, de recibir el premio. <ríe> Ay, no. Para poderme meter en una camisa de, del 2010. Sí, yo estaba seguro. Ahí, sí, seguro. ya. Seguro, yo estaba seguro. Yo, yo creo que pocas veces en mi vida como que he estado más seguro de algo. Ay, que yo también estaba segura cuando presenté a lo de acá. Y yo me acuerdo que me pasó algo horrible, no sé si tú te acuerdas. Mm, yo estaba en el gimnasio, estábamos en el mm -hmm. gimnasio, mm -hmm. o yo estaba sola en el gimnasio, no me acuerdo. No me acuerdo. Y me llamaron como de un número desconocido y yo contesté, yo había mandado la, eh, como la inscripción a la convocatoria, hacía como dos semanas. Ay, que te dijeron, ay, oye, tienes dijeron, que volvernos a mandar. No tienes sé que qué. volvernos a mandar una imagen. Y yo, ay, listo, te la mando ahorita. Y me dijo, no, es importante que me la mandes. Eh, ya, te ya. dijeron, como, como y yo una como, cosa. Yo como, bueno, eh, ya voy. Y me dijo, no, escúchame. Es que no te puedo decir nada, pero la necesito ya. Y eso, esas fueron las palabras que usó esa persona. Entonces yo dije, Dios mío, están haciendo los... Eh, Flyers. Los catálogos. Sí. Me y necesitan mi imagen. Me sí, en mi cabeza yo catálogo. dije, pues no pensé cómo me gané algo, pero yo dije, ya hice el corte, o sea, ya estoy adentro. Les gustó lo mío, ya estoy adentro. Y yo me acuerdo que yo ese día me devolví del gimnasio mm. en bicicleta a toda. Llegué a mi casa, mandé todo y volví a llamar al número que tenía porque me dijeron, por favor, apenas los mandes, llama al teléfono, a tal teléfono, extensión tal, o sea, esto era una cantidad de vueltas que yo tenía que hacer y yo llamé, avisé de todo, me volvió a contestar la persona y me dijo, listo Daniela, muchísimas gracias qué pena, pero era algo urgente y yo, listo, claro que sí, quedó pendiente y pues hasta ahí, hasta ahí fue o sea, después salieron, salió la lista y yo pues obviamente no hacía parte de la lista y fue como un baldado de agua fría horrible. Yo pensé que tú ibas a... Yo también pensé. Yo, yo estaba, o sea, así con la misma como seguridad, perdón, y la misma fe ciega que yo tenía en, en, mi, en mi pintura. Uy, yo, yo dije, obvio vas a... Yo, para mí era como, obvio vas a entrar a Arte Cámara. Hmm. O sea, obvio, obvio vas a... O sea, es como tu trabajo es perfecto para Arte Cámara. Es como... 100%. Yo no estaba diciendo nombres, pero... Ah, yo sí. Sí, no, pues no importa? importa. Sí, pues igual ¿Qué que... ¿Qué importa? Sí, pero en ese momento me dio muy duro. Sí. Además es que tenía muy fresca el haber hecho esa obra. No, y te fue muy bien. Entonces me fue muy bien, todo muy bien, y fue eso como, pff, como que me... O sea, tu tesis fue meritoria, mm. o sea, tú, tú te fue muy... No había nada 
que te estuviera diciendo que no te iba a ir bien. Eh, sí, Julia dice, ay no, Dani, esto, eso está muy cruel. Y Camila Ogorman dice, muy cruel eso, una falta de respeto. Sí, fue feo porque, pues, porque, o sea, en mi cabeza, cuando salieron las listas y yo no estaba, yo incluso creo que, pues yo lo hablé con Nicolás, obviamente lo hablé llorando y yo le decía, pero entonces, ¿para qué me hicieron correr? O sea, par, porque me dijeron, no te puedo decir qué es, pero necesitamos urgente que vuelvas a enviar las imágenes. Porque, pues, si las ven y dicen, ay, no puedo ver esta imagen, pero no me gustó, pues, siguiente, ¿qué importa volver a mandarla? Sí, que es la bobada de decir, la tengo que ver mejor. Exacto. Porque estoy seguro que no me gusta. Exacto, o sea, sí. Eh, dice... Mmm, Camila Ogorman dice, gracias por compartir estas experiencias con tanta honestidad. No, ¿qué tal? Para siempre. eso estamos acá, siempre. Eh, Jair Piñeros dice, uff, eso me pasa todo el tiempo aplicando a murales aquí y siendo rechazado. Mm. Eh, tu mamá dice, extraordinaria pintura. Muchas gracias, mi Olguita. Eh, Julia Tobar dice, uy no, y mandando es, obra física... Y teniendo que pagar, mucho peor. A mí solo me pasó eso con una convocatoria de traga luz, pero bueno, era a Medellín y una ilustración chiquita, jaja, pero igual dolió. Mm, sí, eso no... La verdad es que el dolor es... Dolor es dolor, es lo mismo, o sea... No importa, no importa a, a dónde uno tuvo que mandar, pues para cada uno de nosotros como que significa algo importante. Y entonces, en esa medida, igual lo que lo que le dolió a Julia traga luz, pues a mí me dolió eh, la VP. Mm. Eso suena lo que le dolió a Julia tragar luz. No, sí, sí, eso sí. en, en <risa> Al si que estuvieran no haciendo conozca. una transcripción sí. de eso, es como sí. de que ¿Qué? está hablando ese ser humano. Lich dice, porque seguramente la votaron y al que iban a descabezar era el fulano que te llamó. ¿Cómo así, cómo así, Lich? ¿Lo de la imagen mía? Sí, le dijeron a la persona como... ¿Seguramente la votaron? O sea, la perdieron o algo así. Ah, ok. Sí, pero, pero es que lo curioso es que eran imágenes... No, era digital, O Lich. sea, sí, todo se mandaba digital. Sí, yo me acuerdo que era como... O sea, en últimas, pudo simplemente ser alguien muy como amable que dijo, oye, eh, pero a mí se me hace extraño, Lich. Pero es que además... Porque en una convocatoria... Cuando uno no manda las cosas como las debe mandar, uno perdió la convocatoria. Sí. Es como a nadie le dan otra opción además, de que arregle los papeles que mandó mal. Además, nunca, nunca. tocaba subir un peso específico de imagen y todo. Y si uno no tenía eso, no se subía a la página la imagen. Entonces yo sabía que yo las imágenes que subí, las estaba subí bien, bien porque se lograron bien. adjuntar. Exacto. Entonces Y me acuerdo que incluso... La persona me dijo, y si tienes más fotos, mándalas más. ¿Sabes qué puede ser? Y o yo... sea, y, y nunca lo consideramos en ese momento. O sea, pudo ser que te estaban contemplando. O sea, pudo ser que querían decir, oiga, esta obra me gusta mucho. ¿Tenemos algo en más alta, en resolución alta? Eh, no. ¿Será que le podemos decir a ella que si nos manda algo en más alta? Y la vieron. Sí, pero lo más triste es, o sea, si, si llegan a los niveles de ese tipo de discusión. Sí. Pues es charro que al final es como, sí, estamos discutiendo porque nos gusta, pero al final ni siquiera hizo el corte, si ¿sí me entiendes? El corte ah, para claro. la muestra grande. Sí, pero digamos que te estaban, es lo, lo que es súper normal, por ejemplo, en, en mi caso era, ah, es que esta es una pintura grande, entonces estamos discutiendo a ver cuál pintura grande vamos a meter en la exposición. Entonces no es que te quieran meter, eh, no es como ay, pero esta tiene que estar, sino, ay, necesitamos esta que puede. esto cumpla uh -huh. una función y para cumplir esa función estamos entre estas tres. Sí, eh, Julia dice, a mí me suena rarísimo lo de Dani, como si la fueran a escoger y un jurado al final hubiera llegado a cambiar todo. Porque ¿Sí? esa llamada, si es tal cual la que recibe alguien que gana, la única vez que gané algo fue tal cual así. Sí, quién sabe, quién sabe. Eh... Pero uno... La realidad es que sí, a mí me rompió el corazón ver que Dani se ilusionara tanto. Sí, no. Y, y no se estaba... Yo además te hubiera dicho como, lindita, no, 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 no. Sí, o sea, aterrízate. No, sí, no malinterpretes, te estaban era preguntando esto, 
Pero yo también, cuando, cuando escuchaba eso, yo decía, pues... Es que yo me acuerdo que yo, creo que yo estaba en el gimnasio contigo. Sí, yo... Y sí, tú me dijiste, yo creo que vete yo, ya. Sí, porque yo creo que yo te oí hablar con esa persona. Sí, es que yo me acuerdo. Incluso es que, o sea, yo creo que fue tan... Yo quedé tan en shock cuando me llamaron que me acuerdo exactamente que estábamos en el último piso del gimnasio en unas colchonetas. Uh -huh. Y Haciendo acabamos nada. de hacer, no, la cosa de remo. Y sí. yo estaba sentada en la colchoneta, pero acabamos de llegar. Sí. Y tú me dijiste, vete ya. Pues es que Y yo no te dije, no, pero así. ya hoy tú me dijiste, vete ya. No, yo de pronto ahí contribuí para esto, no. ahora que me haces pensar. No, 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 porque pues igual, es que yo creo que sí hubiera sido al revés. Si fuera una muestra tuya y a ti te llaman y te dicen, no le puedo decir, pero mándeme ya. Sí, pues yo es salgo como, corriendo, yo, sí, chao, lindita. o sea, te teletransportas al sitio pues claro. a mandar las imágenes ya. Les mando empanadas, me, me, sí. me, me conozco, me, eh, me busco la dirección y les mando empanadas. Camila Ogorman dice, claro, ahí pasó algo raro, una fuerte discusión entre el jurado o algo raro. Lich dice, sí, por eso pensé, es que... Eso lo suben en una base de datos y ahí siempre hay un pobre que está organizando todo para los jurados. Es probable que sí te hayan contemplado, pero no tiene mucho sentido lo que dice Julia si ha pasado, jeje. Sí, mm. quién sabe, pues es que igual yo creo que yo ya no pienso en eso porque al principio yo decía, ¿será que de pronto es porque el, es un tema eh, complicado. complicado de tocar? El, el que como que abarca mi obra de la tesis entonces yo dije, ¿será que de pronto era un tema muy complicado y no quisieron que hiciera parte? porque entonces habría una discusión que de pronto era una discusión que no querían tener pero al final yo decía, no no porque con esto solo estoy haciendo como excusas en mi cabeza y yo creo que a mí lo que me servía era como pensar, no me seleccionaron y ya y ya, porque también si uno se hace como ideas en la cabeza o si uno como que trata de alivianarse la historia en la cabeza pues... Pero yo creo que eso es como humano. Que... Sí, 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 pero, pero... O sea, hacer eso no es malo, es, lo ma... es la manera como instintiva de uno protegerse. Sí, no, y yo me acuerdo que también cuando eh, salieron las listas y después cuando vi toda la gente que entró, yo decía ah, bueno, la curaduría era algo muy distinto a lo que yo estaba mm. planteando. Sí. Pero igual, yo... Prefiero pensar, no me seleccionaron y ya, a como empezar a pensar, ¿será que es que de pronto sí, pero de, de pronto, pero de pronto, pero de pronto? Porque pues o si no, uno se queda ahí. Y yo estuve ahí en mucho por mucho tiempo, o sea, yo decía, ¿pero por qué no? O sea, yo me levantaba y yo decía, ¿pero por qué? O sea, ¿por qué? Sí, ¿por qué no les caigo bien? Sí, pues sí, porque me hicieron salir del gimnasio, para nada. Eh, Jair mm. estaba preguntando eh, algo que me pareció curioso sí. <ríe> nunca lo habían preguntado antes A ver. dice, ustedes hablan de nosotros cuando apagan la pantalla sí, claro y claro, en el mismo sentido que yo creo que pues no sé, o por lo menos me gusta imaginarme así, como que igual yo siento que todos ustedes son parte de nuestra vida. Mm. Nosotros tenemos conversaciones con ustedes todo el tiempo en nuestra vida. Entonces, a veces estamos almorzando con Nicolás y es como, ay, esto es como lo que decía Pepita. Ay, ese Jair. Sí, ay, ese Jair Copetón, tal cosa. Entonces, siempre son como cosas así. Eh, sí, 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 sí. O sea... De Lich no mucho. No, de Lich nunca. Pero, eh, pero no, pues obviamente eh, es como que mmm, todas estas conversaciones igual como que permean la vida de uno. Y las conversaciones que uno tiene por fuera de 100%, digo yo. Yo no sé, a mí me da curiosidad de saber si también la gente habla de nosotros por fuera de acá. Lich no mucho. No, Lich nunca. Oiga, Lich, eh, Lich, nos vemos la próxima semana. Sí. De, de, de una vez así, como el lunes, ¿listo? ¿El lunes de la otra semana? Sí. Listo. Y nos trae... ¿Puede, bueno, Lich? No nos trae. Espera, a ver, y miramos si puede, porque no, de pronto pues les sí, como, Lich, oiga, no pues gracias, pero no sí, puede. Sí, que me está haciendo ahí... 
porque me hace cuentas con mi tiempo. Eh, Lich dice, jaja, breve, lunes. Listos, ya, listos. listos. Ya estamos firmes. Camila Ogorman dice, jaja. Camila ja, ja. también está invitada. Ah, y Lich dice, pizza. Eso. Nos trae pizza. Ron, no, porque es no, lunes. No 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 no, 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 pizza. No, no, no. Una de queso y una de pepper, no me tiras toda exigente. Y una de ron. <ríe> eh, Camila Ogorman dice, ja, ja, ja. Yo hablo también de ustedes y a veces los hago ver los videos a mis hijos. No, pobres ni no, no los sometan a eso. Sí, no nos van a querer. No, sí. No, pero creo que no son tan pequeños porque Camila, o por lo menos me acuerdo en el curso de doméstica de Camila, sí. Camila tiene unas fotos del hijo. Sí. Que estaba pensando cuál de esas eh, utilizar para pintar. O sea, no es como si no te comes toda la comida te pongo a ver Our Painted Life. Sí, sí, no es como... Popito, que es mi primo. No, mamá, ya, ya me como... Sí, sí, sí. Ya me como la albahaca. <ríe> sí. Es que yo no los quiero ver más. Sí, ma. Yo no entiendo nada de lo que dices a Daniela yo no hablo inglés, en inglés, mamá. mamá. Yo no hablo inglés. <ríe> eh, Julia dice totalmente, mi esposo me dice, ¿lograste live con tus amigos? Porque le hablo todo el día de los temas. <ríe> Ay, chévere, siempre me gusta cuando, lo que yo decía, como que cuando estas conversaciones eh, permean la vida de uno. Querías decir permean Permean de nuevo. Mm. Eh, Camila dice, son enormes, 26 y 24 tienen y disfrutan de los videos. Qué bueno. Ah, bueno, entonces no es un sometimiento. O oh, pues de pronto eso no, le dicen no a sabe. Camila, sí. Sí, uno no Mamá, sabe. Mamá, increíble, incre sí. yo te prometo que yo lo voy a ver. Sí, mamá, yo solo venía sí. aquí a dejar la ropa sucia a ver si me la lavabas. Sí. No me quiero sentar a ver el video. <ríe> sí. Ya me tengo que Pero ir. Pero te prometo que apenas llegue a la Navidad. casa, sí, yo lo voy a ver, mamá. Te lo prometo, te lo prometo. Pero ahorita no tengo tiempo. Sí. No, mamá, no me acabé el video del zancudo, qué pena. <ríe> sí. No, no eh... me lo pude acabar. Camila mandó unos emojis riéndose. Carlos Taylor dice, ¿dónde tienes la referencia del mosquito? Aquí en la pared de enfrente no se ha movido, es el mejor modelo del mundo. No, 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 tengo una foto, una fotico que le tomé. No me acuerdo dónde, de dónde es este mosco, de acá creo. Puede ser, pues sí. es que igual se ve pared y mosco. O sea, Pero pared la blanca textura y mosco. de la pared, porque la textura de ah, la pared de, tu mamá, de donde mi mamá es muy rocas, específica. ¿Como con roquitas? Sí, es como ¿Cómo el... se llama esa textura? ¿No es de rocas? ¿Rústica? Ah, yo decía rocas. ¿Rocas? No, sí, ella no viene pues, una gruta. No, no, pues obvio no. Pero que parece como con más bulticos. Yo decía no sé, rústica, textura sí. de rocas siempre. Rústica. Y los techos son mega rústicos. ¿Cómo es que se llaman? Yo me acuerdo... Si uno se pegaba contra ese techo... No, mi primo Tato, uh -huh. me acuerdo mucho en un apartamento que vivieron cuando eran chiquitos, uh -huh. tenían un techo, que es, es ese techo que dejan como punticos, así, como chuzos. Pues así, así es el de mi mamá. ¿De chuzos? Pues no son chuzos, no tiene estalactitas, o sea... Pues no... es que este era como estalactitas y yo me acuerdo que mi primo, uh -huh. nosotros en el cuarto de él, no sé por qué estoy pensando que tenía un camarote, pero no tiene uh -huh. sentido. Pero de pronto había un camarote. O sea, te estás Y nosotros nos subíamos. No, nosotros nos subíamos y rompíamos esas partecitas del techo, que eran como triangulitos. Ah, no. Y siempre no nos decían que no dañen estás. el techo. Pues sí, Pero era así? como. Yo creo que es como si al finalizar la pintura, mm. cogían y hacían como bultos y es quedaban que creo como. Que le hacen drips. así con, la, sí, con el sí, pañete. Sí. Entonces sí. dejan que sal. Salga la pintura. Y ahí seca. Pero después la, la, sí, pero seca, pero hay veces después le tienen que pasar cuando no, está secando está para... No, porque está literalmente eran triángulos. Para Yo no sé un poquito. Si Cacaito está acá y se acuerda no, la casa la de, de Tato. La de mi mamá, honestamente, el techo es como una cueva, es verdad. No, pero yo no creo que sea tan así porque no lo he visto... Por, es, pues porque bueno, de no te has me pegado. Voy a fijar. Porque tú nunca en el estudio de la casa de mi mamá... Sí, me he pegado. Pues contra las vigas. No, contra el techo. Cuando uno se para, ah, pero ahí es de madera. Te pegas con la viga, que también esa le puede romper el cerebro a sí, uno. Sí, que uno pero se para y se pega. si uno evadía la viga y se comía el techo, también eran seis contusiones al tiempo. Sí. Era terrible. Sí, 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 sí. Eh, Carlos Taylor dice, ah, una cosa para Dani. Mm -hmm. Siempre quise saber si se podría poner el nombre de las pinturas encima de cada una en la pantalla. 
eh, or eso representa una pesadilla. No se podría, lo que pasa es que no sé por el tamaño que tendría que tener cada textico. Mm. Si se... O sea, si termina siendo como muchísimo ruido en la pantalla. De pronto. De Entonces, pronto. sí, sí, sí. Pero creo, creo que ya acabé, Lindita. Listo. Creo que fue un, un ejercicio bonito hoy. Listo. So, I think I'm, uh, I'm done. Um, point of the day was just to paint. Honestly, it, it, um, it, it's so weird to look back at yesterday and to see um, what was fueling yesterday's painting and, you know, the amount of, like, good vibe that was happening you know, based on this um, really abstract reflection of color and we chose yellow hue. And at the same exact time, something that was horrendous was happening. It, 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 to me, those, those things just kind of fry my brain that you can be in such a good place at a, at, in one moment, just enjoying painting, enjoying uh, the reflections that you're doing, enjoying that conversation, enjoying the uh, resulting painting, And you're not, you're unaware that, um, you know, somewhere in this beautiful universe, uh, there's a horrendous, horrendous act happening at the same time. So um, it was very, very strange to me to think that today we, we could just, you know, pick it up where we left off and just say, let's just paint. Um, nothing we can do about it. Let's acknowledge this, but let's just, you know, go back to paint. That's not who we are. That's not who I am. I, I can't, you know, I, I can't. There, there are certain things that I can push through for sure. And there's other things that I'll never be able to. And like I said at the beginning, I don't want to. I don't want to, like, forget. I don't want to say, okay, I can compartmentalize this and and still be a professional painter and still push through and still... No, no. There are certain things that... I want to feel that I will never be able to push through because that's, it's not right. You know, when something is so wrong, it's okay for it to be wrong in your body. It's okay for you to carry that and say, I don't want to ever forget this because it is horrible. It is us at our darkest. You know, this is, this is rock bottom. I can't really think of things that can be, you know, as painful as, um, and for me as a father, looking at what happened yesterday. So, um, so it's really weird. I, I do think that it's, um, it's, it's something that we all have to do, you know, to bounce back is something that we all have to do because in our lives, sometimes it's not, It's not something as tragic as what happened yesterday, but in our lives, you know, we're going to be flooded by things that are tough, the moments that are going to be tough to, to deal with. And, um, and I've always believed that painting is my ally. Like painting is, you know, Danny is my partner and hopefully forever will be. And we're going to be friends. And we, we're going to be there for each other forever. But me as a human being, and I have to understand myself as an individual first, like what I have is painting. Like if I divorce myself from the idea of, of, of Samu and Fed and the idea of Danny, which is very painful to do, but if I try to see myself as who I am, there's, some, there's peace to dealing with that, which is very, very tough by thinking that I have painting. Like, I have this. This is mine. This is my own. Like, this can be my company forever. And, and um, you know, regardless of, of how dark or how enchanting the world can be, this is with me. And, uh, and I've always believed that, always. I've, I've always said that that is so much more powerful than the making of a painting, than the resulting painting. A painting is, is a painting. I mean, there's extraordinary paintings in history. And... For sure, there will be more extraordinary paintings in the future. So those are going to be there. But for us that are not, you know, for the rest of us that are not extraordinary painters, that we just have to live our lives, painting can be something that 
is not reliant upon our ability to make or to try to make or to push ourselves to make extraordinary things. And it's okay, you know, it's okay knowing that we're not extraordinary painters, that we're not going to change the history of painting, that we're not going to have an impact that's going to have ripples through centuries. Like, that's fine. That still means that there's a life worth living there and that, that you could be decent and have a good life and you know that the people that you do touch in your life are you know are touched in a way that you know you they make you better you make them better um that still is very much so a, a very very a very a life full of dignity i feel so you know even though that's what i wish to believe about painting there are times where you say, this is worthless. This is pointless. It's pointless. And maybe you can convince yourself, well, I have to do it because it's, it's my job. Like, it's my job. If, if I don't do this, I can't pay for my kid's school. I can't pay for their food or their clothes. I can't pay for rent. I can't pay for, you know, my, my bills. Um, but beyond that, um, uh, sometimes we, you know, we reach that place where you say, honestly, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if I paint it or not. It's, you know, it's not going to change anything, or at, at least it's not going to change any of the things that merit change. And, um, but maybe, maybe, and I kind of felt that today because it was very tough. I just... Danny was super nice and she was set, telling me in, in the morning, if you, you know, we don't have to do this. Like, we don't have to do this every day. You don't have, we don't have to do um, live painting today. It's okay. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with tough days saying, hey, I, I just didn't want to feel, I just didn't feel like it. And, and it's okay. Um, but, um, but today I felt that it was nice. It was nice. You know, it goes to show you that people, you know, when we provide each other with company, um, it's, you know, it's many times exactly what we needed. It's many times like, you know, the, the right um, place that we need to be so that we can just get past like things that are tough. So for me, it was, it was that. It was you guys and a mosquito. So mosquito was just the perfect... Um, perfect place where I could just detach myself enough and still be completely devoted to what I was doing, which is, you know, the most fragile of little subjects. It's, um, you know, it's this beautiful example of this fragile bit of life. Uh, and and just, just look at it for two hours. You know, just look at it. And just every time you try to, you know, paint one of those um, flimsy little legs, you're just fascinated by nature. You know, it almost like gives you back hope. But, and in my mind, because I'm a bit of a cynic, but in my mind, it gives me hope. Maybe not for us, you know, maybe human beings are just not meant to be here for a long time. But maybe for life, you know, the pulse of life. And, and that's kind of beautiful too. That there, there can be fascinating beings um, inhabiting this, this planet that are far more balanced than we are, that are far more rational than we are, far more intelligent than we are, even though we think that intelligence is about Googling something or putting people in the moon. Um, no, these beings are brilliant. So, and yeah, Danny. No, no, no. I was going to say you're far more compassionate. Cause... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I but mean, nature. A, I nature mean, is tough, but nature is imbalanced. Yeah, that's what nature I was going to say. Nature knows balance. Because we, I think, these things that happen just are so complicated to kind of like digest mm. because they it's it's someone trying to harm another being just because. Yeah, even, just because. Even a a lion when. It has to hunt, it hunts. Yeah, but it has or to eat. But so when it's they're like... full, they don't hunt. No. Like they'll see gazelles going through and they'll be like, I actually 
eight. I'm fine. I'm okay. I don't need to hunt you. They probably know deep down it's like if we hunt them too much, they're going to be gone. So we need to hunt them just enough, just mm-hmm. so like we have to eat just as much, like the least that we need to eat because we need them to be alive so that we can eat. So nature is just perfect. It's perfectly in balance. Mm. And, you know, maybe we're just going to be this little blip and it's going to be like, whoa, it's going to be one of those species that nature says, well, we gave them these variables and they completely messed it up. So let's, you know, let's try to do this again. And the beautiful thing about nature that we don't understand is nature has all the time in the universe. Mm. You know, if it takes eons to try again, it'll try again. And that's fine. Mm. But we think time is, you know, an hour. An hour is too much. So we don't, we we can't even, you know, see ourselves in that equation. But uh, but anyways, that's what this little guy was uh, good for today. So, um, so yeah, so hopefully... Um, you know, tomorrow we can kind of ease back into. I was feeling guilty. I, I was gonna. I was gonna be like completely honest here, and I was gonna say I'm gonna feel guilty if I start talking about painting. I'm gonna feel like an idiot. I'm gonna feel like that's. And and I, I was thinking that's not me. That's I can't. I can't fake this. I can't. I can't be happy. I can't be like, hey, how's it going? How's everyone doing? I was. I. I since yesterday since yesterday afternoon i feel i don't know why i don't know why but i feel like there's this little piece that broke Mm -hmm. and it's not like uh like i was trying to fix samu's glasses yesterday because he broke them and they were super difficult to like put together and danny finally found like a way to put them together but it's really kind of you know like it's a, a makeshift. Yeah, it's a makeshift. Like, you know, he, he's, he's got to wear like his broken glasses uh, until we can, you know, b- eventually buy another pair. But um, I kind of felt like that. Like it's broken and you can kind of mend it, but it's broken. It's broken. It's, I don't know. So, yeah. So, I don't know. So tomorrow, yeah, we'll we'll paint. We'll paint and we'll try to, you know, get back into a rhythm where none of no feelings that i felt today are going to be forgotten not nothing nothing will ever just be like oh yeah one day was okay and then tomorrow yeah we can we can totally be fine and stupid and talk about anything um no i don't think so but um but we're gonna work we're gonna work because Honestly, that's all I've known like my whole life just to sort of work through it. And at the beginning, I thought painting was just work. And I'm glad that now I don't, I mean, I see it as my job, but I see it as um, a practice that has so much value to me that, you know, I know that whatever I put into it, it's going to give back like tenfold. And I, I'm. It, it's gotten to a point where I feel like I need this to be a little bit better, to feel a little bit better. I, I, I didn't think that was possible today because I don't think painting can mend any, like everything. I don't think it can, you know, if, if there's something that's, um, that's deep enough, I don't think it can fix that. But it can, you know, it can tell you like, hey, there's no, this is not a solution, but, Maybe if we go through this, maybe it's a little bit better. A little bit. Just a little bit better. And that's all I can ask for right now, honestly. So, anyways. um, Thank you, guys. And and hopefully, um, I don't want to be apologetic because that's just how I feel. So, I don't want to apologize for feelings. But um, but hopefully, um, I know it was tough today. Different, tough, you know. But um, But that's life. I mean... Yeah. I think that we've uh often talk about how we really like that we can be genuine in this channel and this is also uh like being that like 
acknowledging what you're feeling and how you're feeling because not every day is going to be a happy day. No. And no. not every day is going to be a day you want to laugh and you want to make jokes. And I think that's that's cool too. Like that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah. So thank you guys for uh, hanging out. That was um, super nice uh, company for me today, for both of us, I say. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always, whenever I say me, it's not because I'm not acknowledging Danny. It's just that I don't, Danny has such a powerful voice that I never, ever try to speak for her. At, at least I'll do it. If I do it, it's because I know that we both feel very, very, very strongly about certain things. But in every other case, like, I always feel... Like, no, Danny has like this amazing, beautiful voice, super strong that, you know, that's that's her voice. So whenever I say I, it's not not the fact that um, Danny's invisible or not here or I don't acknowledge her. But but um, but this was uh, this was it's um, it helped me quite a bit. So thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow. Yes.